Welcome to Gamescom live from the Xbox booth. In just a few minutes, the team from Star Wars Outlaws will show off some gameplay from one of the oh most boy. anticipated games of the year. Then we'll tell you how to get into the newest chapter of World of Warcraft, most even if you've never played before. Shit on. I'm so excited for that, but later, it's time to talk updates as the squad from Elder Scrolls Online stops by to unpack what fans can expect from this latest chapter and show off some game-changing features. Plus, we've got more from Microsoft Flight Simulator, Fallout 76, and Towerborn, not to mention a new sim that literally lets you date everything. Intrigued? Stay tuned to find out more about these and many, many, many other titles. Okay. But first, it's time to throw it to the latest from Just Star Wars Outlaws. Kay Vess, the underworld's favorite new scoundrel. This is your one shot. A safe filled with 157 million credits. And I can get you inside. Get in. How about getting out? This job? It's a death wish. Your lives are over. Your family, friends. The graphics oh. look kind of weak. There's nowhere in the galaxy you can hide. That's gonna be super boring. You wanna live? The vehicle combat is in not. the underworld's most dangerous syndicates <laughs> and pull off the greatest heist the Outer Rim has ever seen. I'm in. The gold edition oh, to play three so days early. Because that rowdy trailer belongs to Star Wars Outlaws. And joining me now to talk through this very epic space adventure, please welcome creative director Julian Garrity. How are you doing? It doesn't look amazing. Excited. Yeah, I bet. I mean, that's a hell of a trailer to cut. I mean, do you know, do you know what? That's the first time I've seen it. There's some like cool concepts there, it's but awesome. like, oh, it's, uh, yeah. the music gets me every I feel like time. the gameplay is going to be boring. The, characters. Yeah. the locations look great. So, from a point of view of somebody who's just discovering it, <laughs> I'm very happy. Good. I mean, can you set the scene for us a little bit? Because although that did give us a little look at what we're going to be getting up to, yeah. what is Star Wars Outlaws exactly? What is Star Wars Outlaws? Mm. So, it's the first ever open world Star Wars RPG First game ever? I don't think that that's true. Scoundrels, yeah. Outlaws. My favorite archetype of Star Wars. So it's it's that looks really pretty good. giving you the keys to be uh, part of the underworld, part of the galaxy of Star Wars on your turn. Hopefully my mic I isn't too loud. Because you're right, this is a brand new experience Brilliant. for a lot of players. We've had we've had tales about force wielders before, but the scoundrel so important to Star Wars in general, and now to find new players one is incredible. I mean that looks pretty good, no? Oh, this, this, this Twitch app. Okay, we're good. And we've seen a bit of Shara, we've seen a bit of Tatooine. You've picked some great locations for the game, but now we're going to get a little look at the planet Akiva, right? Yes, absolutely. So this is the first time we really dive into Akiva. And Akiva was only ever featured in a series of books called Aftermath. Mm -hmm. um, so we're the first to take those words and to transform them into something lush, beautiful, complex. Yeah. And complex not just in scenery, but also in the politics, the dynamics that are happening. You'll be able to see while Kay uh, runs around the streets of, uh, of uh, Mira, the Aren't main the city. It's very beautiful. Though. It's gorgeous, and you go yeah. in every but it's also corrupt. And you'll see that there's stormtroopers, there's an empire presence, and the pikes corrupt. and the huts are also fighting it out. So 
empires and syndicate presence within the city, mm. within the planet as a whole. Well, we'll get on to the syndicate a redone in just a sec, but as I've heard from you before, speaking about the game, one thing your team's really proud of in particular with Star Wars Outlaws is those hubs of where Kay can Nothing get her wrong. intel, and that all starts with cantinas. Now, the cantinas that we have on Akiva are very different to the ones we have on Tatooine. Tell me a bit about how you go in designing these oh. to make sure they feel like Star Wars cantinas, but also reflective of the planet or moon that they're on. Absolutely. So, the cantina is this flash... They're different because they're green. Point of the colors are different. Everything that makes Star Wars special. And the approach, the design philosophy that uh, we worked with, with uh, Lucasfilm Games, really allowed us to understand oh, like, is there a loading the simplicity, to go down there? relatability, like, and yet There's difference that all of these locations can, can take. So, for example, in the real world, you have jazz bars, you have Korean yep. barbecues, you have all of these different types yep. of location. So each one of these had to have a different type of vibe. Here in uh, Akiva, it's a tropical tiki bar. <laughs> so that's the vibe that we were going for there. I feel like so, there's not a lot it's there. It's a great place to meet up with these crime syndicates and get some jobs. How do they make an impact on the game? So, of course, this is a game about the underworld of Star Wars. And there are four main syndicates. There's maybe more, but there are four main syndicates that you'll be dealing with. The Pikes, the Huts, uh, the Ashiga clan that we created with Lucasfilm Games, and the Crimson Dawn. Mm. And you, as an outlaw, are going to be able to work on your reputation with each one of those. Doing jobs for some, betraying others, and building your profile accordingly. So very, very involved in your personal story throughout this adventure. That's incredible. So they will like form the a general structure that Kay can live out this story in, but how much agency do players have to maybe go off the beaten path, Fast maybe traveling. take Kay down some slightly darker routes, or playing the good guy okay. a bit? A hundred percent up to you. So, for example, here, this is the first time we ever show this quest, and it's a quest where you're where's all you've the, landed where's in all the gear. Your main focus is to go pick up Where's a droid smith, and stuff? a oh. droid smith that you need to pull off this heist that we've been talking about. 157 million credits. Bones. That's like a lot of so credits. Bad, yeah. And to do Assassin's that, you're going to have to game. upgrade your equipment, which uh, we're doing there. We're yeah. making sure that your loadout is the right one. You jump on your, your speeder, and you'll be able to be distracted by curiosity on the way. So you're speeding off. You're on the way. It's quite a journey, mm. and on that journey, you're going to be able to do jumps, tricks. Nice. The bike is uh, <laughs> based on a motocross, uh, so it, world, it feels visceral as well. Just, right. And you'll be you know, able to come across different things. Like here, we have you can't go left, a, you can't go um, right. uh, an Imperial shuttle landing. Just do a you little, go and mingle with those people? Do you, do you mess around with the Empire at this point, or do you save it for a little bit later on? Because mm. guess what? That droid smith, he's going to be located in an Imperial compound. Uh, Graphics just look luck. okay. Just, just our luck. luck. Well, looks, looks how about well the equipped can the player be to tackle? I mean, it looks good, but like... <laughs> that's not a compound. Every that's game a should fortress. Look good I mean, what does Kay bring to the table to be able to deal with these kind of scenarios? Well, she, she's yeah. got to have the equipment to be able to do that. And that and starts okay. off with things like your binoculars, to be able to scope the different Marcus. opportunities. There's not just one way in. There are several ways in. The way, the surest Compass. way to, to meet an, a very certain end <laughs> is to go in guns blazing. Because this is the empire we're talking yeah. about. So it's a massive force in front of you. We're going to go stealth. So it's open okay. world because you drive up to binoculars, the Binoculars, one thing. Blaster, another. Nyx, incredibly important. Let's that just have a taste out. of how Kay uses Nyx. Oh, okay. yeah. She's going to be Jedi sending survivor. her across and attacking, clawing the hell out of that <laughs> stormtrooper. I feel bad for the guy. That's you shouldn't. You shouldn't. He's there. He he's that's built stupid. for this. Okay. True. You take out the second uh, oh, yeah, stormtrooper, and now you have to hack through that laser barrier to be able to get into the gooey good stuff in yeah. the middle of that fortress. So there's quite a few different ways of engaging in uh, in a mission. Why do you have to hack in? What? How did the stormtroopers get out if you have to hack in? Why can't they get back in somehow with a, a key pass or or something? Where how are they how are they supposed to get back in? Like if they like they have to 
they have to communicate every time. They can't just like scan a card and walk back in to open the gate. Like this. Absolutely. Um, what would happen if we you have to play did this go in game. or blast this blazing? Would it be the, a big problem for us on this particular mission? This is an Empire compound, so that's going to be a real problem. Okay. I'll take your advice on One that. of the conditions is that you don't set off the alarm. Because if oh. the alarm sets off, you're going to shut down that compound. Fair enough. You may revisit the compound later on to be able to, to steal more stuff and to, to really find all of the treasures. And there, you can do it the way you want. But ATSTs guarding the door, you've got a blaster in next. Or maybe it's you just really want to put yourself in that sort of situation. Uh, I can Seems take my chances, honestly. <laughs> um, earlier on, though, we did see with Kay's using her blaster now, but before that, she was working on it a bit on her workbench yes. um, it, inside the Trailblazer. That, what, what is that all about? Is that like that's, upgrading? Or, yeah, or? that's absolutely upgrading your weapon. Okay. Because we want this to be about a, a resourceful underdog. Wait, and a how do the stormtroopers get up here? Uh, that, what, they also have to climb this. For that, Braided she was working on it a bit on her workbench yes. um, it, inside the Trailblazer. That, what, what is that all about? Is that like that's, upgrading? Or, yeah, or? that's absolutely upgrading. Where's your the practicality? Because okay. we want this to be about a, a resourceful underdog. And a resourceful underdog, they have one main tool that you can upgrade. You can have a charge blast, which is like a rocket launcher. What? And, uh, plasma, which is the regular blaster right. with speed mode to it. So it feels like an automatic weapon. And you have uh, one uh, function, which is the, the shock function, mm. which we'll see a little bit later on. Nice. I love the way that she even moves around. Like Don't you mentioned before, doors. scoundrel archetypes, one of your favorites, but yeah. the movements of Kay, the, like the mannerisms, the swagger really communicates oh. that so well. Oh, so your pet has the force, but you don't. Oh, that makes sense. It It's something that we worked on division, division two. Right. And those are trained military uh agents yeah. civilian agents but with military training here we wanted a resourceful underdog so you have to have that different movement but all of those mannerisms and that sort of swagger that you see yeah. there that's umberly <laughs> who brought that to the character what's um, wrong with she'll the be able to tell on you all your about okay great i'll make what sure is the character uh, one very thing that like i want to point out as well we did just talk about the blaster blended. a little bit we're getting to see some sense. of the action of it very there. blurry your nice character shot, is very blurry um, and like the sound blended. of it too i mean in star wars there are so many sounds that are iconic players you know when we listen to them it makes our the hair and our if you close up. your eyes and think oh. tie fighter yeah tie fighter i'm thinking like the the, the seismic charge yep oh man yeah but k's blaster also has a really satisfying punch to it so Tell me about the process for making sure that you're designing a weapon sound-wise, the feel of it, the look of it, make sure it's authentically Star Wars, but also brand new, something that you've created. We have to get inspiration from the past, mm. get inspiration from the original trilogy, because this, uh, this adventure happens in between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Right. So we, we had access to all of those things. And then the pleasure is looking at that, working with that, and coming up with something that sounds new, and that become its own sound. And that extends from the sound design to, you know, the music of the piece, which I think is remarkable. Yeah. You heard it oh, in the trailer. It's, it's just it's fantastic. Anytime I hear the horns, honestly, I'm goosebumps. <laughs> it's crazy. So we finally find our droid smith here then, I guess. Yeah, who's not particularly happy to see you. Uh, so I'm not going to spoil the, the story, but the droid smith, Gadik, has a pass with you. Okay. And he's, he's ended up working with the Empire, so you know he's made some really bad decisions. Oh dear, yeah. It's not great. I mean, he's already got a, a protocol droid firing a gun at us. I never thought I'd see that. But. <laughs> I got a problem with a gatekeeper droid. <laughs> Ah, now that's that's caught his interest. That's caught his yeah, interest. Yeah, interesting. There's a real challenge. There's yeah. a real opportunity. It's not motivated by the credits, but tinkering mm. around with some uh, some new tech. I like that's it. what catches his uh, his eye. I could get on with this guy, <laughs> but the problem is, once we extract Gadik, we have to get out as well, right? And that's where the blaster comes into its full All right. use. Nice. So. Uh, this is going to be part of one of those main quests. Mm -hmm. It's a linear quest, and there's a whole path where you explode into uh, the, like, the combats, and you yes. use all of this the This is like they're trying to redo Han Solo. Right. Before, we, we 
edited a That's little segment, is. which was a puzzle room. Right, we didn't yeah. want to spoil the puzzle. We didn't want to spoil the traversal. Exactly. We wanted to focus on the real action of this yeah. piece. Great, and now we're getting some serious just, combat because there was no just, chance to oh sneak there. Everybody's it's just lagged over and saw us immediately. It doesn't seem like there's Let's a lot of death just death escape. This but this, this is where Kay sort of comes into her own because scoundrels, they love to improvise. They, you know, they're good under pressure. And so I guess you want you encouraging players to make sure they look around them, identify bits that are useful, Absolutely. send nicks out, you know, play all, around with it a bit. All of those tools, you've got an adrenaline shot. Oh, uh, if you recognize that, it allows you to slow time, pick your targets, and it's an automatic kill. Nice. Ah, that's a bit more of a problem, though. This guy's got a shield, and one of your modules will be able to disable that shield, opening them up, for the uh, the deadly shot. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. And that's it. You grapple hook out and, and escape the base. You make it seem so easy. I met when I'm gonna. I'm gonna try it, and it's not gonna be that. I easy. wish I was playing this. Game. <laughs> There's a whole team, uh, and they've done very an amazing slow job of capturing this game. Yeah, too. I mean, right it's at the end there, we also got a little sizzle, a little taster of the rest of what's to come in the game, and. One thing in particular I spotted there was some Sabak happening yep. as well. Yep, Sabak. So you got to tell me about that because I love it. Sabak is a big part of the scoundrel lifestyle. Where's your droid so we wanted to create that's on, like, our own rules, which gave us this, this depth uh, of play now? and being able to collect special what is that? cards. You have to buy that? Change is the that rules DLC? Of the game while is that actually go DLC? Along. So there'll be tournaments, the there'll be high here? stakes games, there'll be nice. a lot of credits to win as well. Great. Well, I'll have to get practicing on that. So definitely. But so I just want to say thank you so much for joining it's us. It's been incredibly insightful. Cannot wait to play the game, and it's walk not too long until launch. So. No, but it doesn't do anything. It just walks around. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, Julian. Next up, though, to celebrate the launch of Star Wars Outlaws, we decided to test some lucky fans on their Star Wars knowledge. Let's see how they got on. Welcome to the home of Star Wars Outlaws here at the beautiful Xbox booth. And it's time for a massive giveaway. So we've rounded up some fans for a chance to win some very fabulous prizes. How will they earn this sweet loot, I hear you ask? Well, Star Wars trivia, of course. So here's how it's going to work. Each fan will be given a Star Wars Outlaws trivia question, and if they answer correctly, they will win a beautiful Nyx plushie. Isn't it adorable? Wow. Then they will be given a more difficult cool. Star Wars Outlaws question. And if they answer that one correctly, they will win one of these custom Xbox Design Lab Elite Series 2 controllers mm. and be entered to win yeah. one of our grand prize Star Wars Outlaws Xbox Series X and S consoles. That's pretty cool. Are you ready? Let's go. I mean, it kind of looks like shit. I'm here with the lovely but it looks Citroen. Cool. And where are you from, Citroen? I'm from Cologne. Amazing. Are you ready to win some prizes? Like, yes. We'll tell you. Probably okay, think let's it's go. Good. First question. What is the name of the main character of Star Wars Outlaws? It's Kate. Yes. What's her last name? Uh, Bess. Yes. Let's go. Oh. That's a nice plushie for you. Well done. Hey, that was let's two try. questions. What Something the fuck is that? Out. Okay, are you ready for your next question? It's gonna give her the controller. Those yes, two I'm questions. Ready. Piece of shit. What is the name of K Vess's starship? Oh god. You can do this, Citrin. I don't know. Well, take a guess. Uh, think welcome. Close, but it's not correct. Well, we still got your next plushie, so well done, though. Yay! What's the answer? Okay, I am here with. Yeah. Just like, yeah, and lovely to speak yep. to you. And where are you from today? I'm from Switzerland. Stunning. Are you ready to win some Star Wars prizes? Yes. Okay, question number one. What is the name of K Vess's main companion? The little guy called Nix. Yes, it is. And here he is now. Congrats. Yay! Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Okay, are you ready to step up a level now? Yes. Okay. And how can Nyx help Kay in battle in the game? So he can attack people and believers and stuff. That sounds good to me. I think that's correct. Let's go, GG! That was an insanely well easy question. 
What the fuck is that? That first girl I'm got fucked. With... Marcel? Marcel, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Are you ready That's to win not fair at all. Presents? Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> first question. They should just What's give the out the controllers. Day of Star Wars Outlaws? It's the 30th of August. Yes, it is! GG! Woo! A nix for you! Let's go. No long at all as well. Are you ready for your next one? Oh, yes. Okay. Between which two classic Star Wars movies do the events of Star Wars Outlaws take place? Uh, the Empire Strikes Back and The Return of the Jedi. Let's go! Well Damn. done, Marcel! You win the controller! A true Star Wars fan, GG's. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Well the shift question was so much harder. I'm now here with... Ilga. Ilga, how are you today? Uh, thank you very much, fine. Awesome. Let's win some Star Wars prizes together. Are you ready? Yes, I am. First question, what is the preferred weapon of k -Vess? Uh It's a blaster. Yes, it's a heavy blaster. Let's go. Okay, Next first question easy you. question. <laughs> well done. I are barely you know to step shit about level? this game. Of course. Okay. Next question, a bit harder. Where did K grow up? Oh, I don't know this. Uh, on Tatooine, but I have forgot the exact place. Oh, I'm so sorry. It was Cantonica and a uh, Canto Bite, but so close. Well done. Enjoy the next plushie. Oh, thank you very much. You got the planet, right? Let's go. You know how many planets there are in Star Wars? Yay. A lot. Woo! Okay, I'm now here with Thomas. Thomas, lovely to chat to you. Are you ready to win some? What if you just said in her house? Oh, That's even more yeah. specific. I believe in than you. Okay, first the city question: or Who is the publisher of Star Wars Outlaws the game? It's a Ubisoft. Yes, it is! A next plushie for you! Woo! Let's go! Okay, next question. A little bit harder now. Yeah. Okay. I've tried. <laughs> what type of droid is ND5? K's pal ND5. What kind of droid? It, it must be a PX Commander. Yes, it is! PX Commando now! Yes! Thank you. GG! <laughs> Well, that's it for us here at Trivia Gamescom. But if you think you can do a little bit that better, first, you that first can lady enter got for a chance to win a custom Star Wars Outlaws Xbox Series X with a controller stand or an Xbox Series X. All you need to do is head over to twitch.tv slash Xbox and follow the prompts in chat to enter this question. What species is Nyx? Good luck. Remember to answer in chat. And now it's over it's to horse. Henry with one of the beautiful it's voices obvious. from Star Wars Outlaws. He's a horse. Yeah. Hey, they did pretty good. But joining me now is Kay Vess herself, Omerly Gonzalez. How are you doing? Ooh, Happy to be here. Exciting. They pretty did pretty good cool. on the quiz. They did. I was answering yeah. along with them. Yeah. You got them all right, obviously. 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 Nick's did too. We're... Yeah. we're He's yeah. got his drink. He's happy. It's so good. Yeah, it's perfect. Great. Um, now, I'm Fortnite the sort of person festival. that loves to know uh, Tower, a Star Wars fan Tower Born. in particular. So before we get into talking how you're actually in the game, mm -hmm. break down for me. What was else? your first like? What was your Star Wars Awakening? How did that come about? Well, I grew up in Venezuela, so it was all in Spanish, and it was Guerra de las Galaxias. Mm -hmm. So you know that's something I love about Star Wars is that it doesn't matter the color of your skin, what language you speak, where in the world you are, you all have a Star Wars story, and mine just happened to be. On the other side yeah. of, uh, you know, South America. Except so if you're white. it's exciting, you know, when I got to share about it um, with my family and friends. I got to, they don't to do relate to anymore. it mm. in my language, in my culture. What was their reaction when they first found out that, by the way, I'm actually going to be in it now? Uh, unreal. This I mean, there was a lot of questions. This? I think my family also especially my parents they started watching all of the movies uh, especially when i shared that it was in the original I trilogy between I empire and you know return of the From jedi so i did too i think i like blasted the star wars theme song and i watched <laughs> the movies and anytime i see anything star wars i just have this like star wars <laughs> you know? i'm like yeah, that's us. yeah. That's us. <laughs> um in terms of k and and playing the role of a scoundrel where did you have to go for that? What did you have to reach into oh. to sort of conjure up oh, she plays this the character? Video game character? I mean, obviously, we've seen scoundrels in this timeline, like the likes of Han Solo mm. and Lando Calrissian. But they're so confident. They have the expertise. They know what they're doing because they're out Why there. Why didn't they the just model the character uh, after her? K, she's a rookie. 
she looks she, way better than what they did with the actual but, character. You know, she she's a survivalist and what the hell is that? Look at Stellar Blade. They did a huge form. disservice. I I love the attitude, awesome. you know, the charm, the witty banter, the swagger that they have, and you know those characters were obviously inspiration. But oh, she's uh, trying way too hard. I got to try hard to bring my own was. heart to it. You know, Kay she's trying way too hard. She's imperfect. She has a vulnerability that I feel I brought to the role even from the first tape that I sent in back in 2022, you know? So that's something, you know, it's a, it's a collaboration from the whole team. Well, the whole team's really important to it because when you're playing through it and you, he you he even hear the, like, banter between K and ND5 and you're like, God, I really am a K vest. This is so relatable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. What's it like working with a wider team then on building a new cast of characters to put into a franchise like Star Wars? Do you have to work together too much or...? Absolutely. I yeah. mean, when you walk into a franchise that's already established, I guess you understand so much of it, the tone, you know, just kind of the general vibe of what we're making. But because it's motion capture, Right, you yeah. require so much aid in visualizing what the world is going to look like. I don't have the luxury of relying on sets and costumes and hair and makeup. I mean, we're in the mocap studio in like these cat suits, wet suits <laughs> with these markers. We're in a volume surrounded by hundreds of <laughs> infrared the cameras that are capturing our every movement. Thing used, it's a lot more intentional. Thing. You have to have this awareness of your body and your instrument. And you rely so much on the director, the writer, the storyboards. Sometimes they say, okay, we're about to do this kind of scene. So they pull up, you know, inspiration from the TV shows, from movies right. that have previously been done to capture just the air of what we're trying to make because we have to create it in our mind's eye so that must be a completely different way of bringing characters to life compared to like film or television which you have done before and yeah. you have worked in games before but this is clearly the most involved project Absolutely. that you've ever been on right from top to bottom i mean i'm there every day in almost every scene i've recorded over like 11,400 lines for the game. God. So I hope you enjoy my voice. You're going to hear a lot of it. Uh, it's it's expansive, you know, yeah. and it takes years to create it. Not They've been working on it, it for a couple years before I jumped on uh, back in 2022. So it's a long process. It's mm. it's an incredible journey. I truly have grown alongside KVS. So even though I've done video games before, leading a game requires a lot more responsibility. But I was ready for it. Totally. I, I can't wait to play the game, honestly. It just looks absolutely incredible. Surely they had a real-life Nyx, at least, to, to help with that. Part. Obviously, we yeah, had yeah, him yeah. on set. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the inspiration's there. Well, unbelievable. Thanks so much for joining me. I cannot wait to play the game. It's not too long till it launches either, so... I know. You're going to get to see how other people react. It's hitting people on August 30th. I'm going to get my Sabak face yeah, ready we'll for see. it so that I'm good to go. Keep uh, your cards close. We very close. Enough. You can use Nyx to cheat, yeah, but don't tell anyone. He's great for that. <laughs> I'll right, try well, it I'll if it's on Game Pass. Games, Thank you. Otherwise... Well, coming up, we celebrate 20 years of World of Warcraft with the new War Within expansion. We're going to find out what fans can expect from the latest Elder Scrolls Online update. And next up, we're catching up with the team from Two Point Studios on their latest title, Two Points Museum. The first, the die has been cast, and that is only the beginning. Check out the new expansion coming to Lost in Random. I think I've seen this. This is out now or What in random? We're not so dead, like you? A dice wheel then. Oh, luck has finally turned. Anyway, what you having? They're all like. Let's make this one count. This wish list now. I guess it's early access. Greetings it from good. the amazing CSUN Games, developers of the upcoming cross platform online multiplayer game Mecha Break, launching in 2025. 
This game looks cool. Showcase some gameplay through Mecha Breaks Core Mode six versus six squad missions. This is gonna be a good game. Oh my god, by capturing and uploading launch codes. The striker we're featuring is Falcon, a lightweight mech that excels in aerial combat. That was really knew what they were doing. Players can maneuver during their dive into the fight, controlling their landing spot at the match's start to open strategic options that can turn the tide of battle. For example, Falcon excels in aerial strikes and reconnaissance. Pilots must be agile, coordinating hit and run tactics with teammates while staying under the radar. We've refined combat to ensure it feels satisfying both in the air and on the ground, with each mech having unique attributes distinct from other shooters. Each striker has unique speeds, inertia handling, and specialized combat capabilities for seamless transitions between aerial and ground attacks. This looks like those arcade games that you always wanted to like play at home. But you couldn't. Because they didn't exist. When implementing that, this looks like that. challenge was balancing air and ground mechs, given the varying visibility, traversal paths, and cover types across our maps. We address this by carefully assessing each mech's strengths and weaknesses in multiple scenarios. On the Mercury Shipyards map, the goal is to move a payload to the finish line. Seizing checkpoints along the way speeds up the payload. Brace yourself and face threats from both the air and ground with your squad. Showcasing another striker, Tricera. Damn. Wielding dueling Gatling guns, Tricera is a ground-based striker that often serves as the tank for a team, boosting efficiency when pushing the payload. Tricera's Fortress Worker features an anti-missile system that uniquely protects the payload or control points. Cool. Another powerful ground system. striker is Stego. When transformed, Stego specializes in long-range fire transform as an ultra-heavy striker armed with the big guns. On the Prague sinkhole map, the goal is to collect mining data by capturing data nodes, making teamwork and strategy essential. Panther is a brawler equipped with a powerful lance and shield booster kit. Panther's devastating charged attacks and defense capabilities make it a fearsome opponent in okay. close combat. But Panther isn't the only brawler in Mecha Break. Be prepared to face Elisness and Welcome, two melee machines with unique abilities that can take out enemies both at a distance and up close. Oh yeah, that's really cool. The brawlers have unique finishing moves Ooh, that finishing keep the moves? action intense. Raider is a powerful and swift air attack that can transform into a bomber to rain fire on enemy forces. It's like your DPS character. The elegant yet lethal Narukami rules the battlefield with pinpoint snipers and advanced oh, optical cool. camouflage, making it almost impossible to capture the stick on walls and shit. We invite you to join us on this exciting journey with Mecha Break. Stay tuned for its commercial release in 2025. That looks really good. Welcome, esteemed guests, to Two Point Museum's Coastal Deep Dive. The Marine Life Museum in Two Point County is, just as you'd expect, situated along the coast and boasts a treasure trove of wet lantern exhibits. Or at least it will do once you've hired some experts and sent them on perilous expeditions to unearth rare, but sometimes soggy sunken treasures. 
Discovering and maintaining the happiness of aquatic life is also a big attraction of the Marine Life Museum. And fish have a surprising number of requirements to meet if they're to stay happy and, uh, swimming. Guests will be wowed by the remnants of Wetlantis, and the more impressed they are, the more they will donate. The more donations means more funds to keep your facilities clean, everything nicely decorated, and vending machines well stocked. Once you uncover the Marine Life Museum, you can then hire Wetlantian experts in all your other museum locations. From there, you can grow your aquatic collection throughout your Two Point Museum empire. Thank you for attending this coastal deep dive. Great. Wishless now. If you've ever dreamed of running your own museum or just really enjoy the two-point series of games, then listen up, because our next guests have the game for you. And me, here to tell us all about Two Point Museum, please welcome Two Point Studios Design Director Ben Huskins and Executive Producer Joe Kula. Welcome to Gamescom, to Cologne. It's Thank great to be much. here. Great to be here. How is Germany treating you? Oh, wonderful. absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. It's the weather such a is great. Good. The atmosphere is incredible. Yeah, it is. A little bit too warm, but that's okay. Like the that's okay. Good. And the, the whole thing is that the cool, week for games. So everything time. okay. And today is the first consumer day, so we're really excited to have yeah. you here. So, Two Point has taken on um, education with campus, on medicine with hospitals. So now, Ben, how did you come up with the idea, the theme of Museum, and why should fans be excited about this game? Yeah, well, the yeah, thing that's great about museums is that they else. have uh, these amazing collections okay. of completely unique exhibits. Um, and as soon as we started talking about museum as an idea, we got really excited about what if we let players build up their own unique collections of exhibits. Um, and, and that got us thinking wow. about, well, like how do the players get these exhibits? They, they can, um, them. Uh, you know, they can send their else. experts off on expeditions around the county. Uh, they can basically explore and discover. We really love this idea of getting across this sense of exploration and discovery and anticipation about what might come back when your, your team comes back from an expedition. Uh, and this just got us really excited about you know, getting these exhibits and then, of course, once you've got them, putting them on display in your museums and, and actually that whole side of it as a museum manager, you deciding how you lay things out and you deciding where do you put your most impressive exhibits, uh, where do you want to channel your guests through the museum and how do you give them the best possible experience? I've got some ideas, but um, I've also saw in the, in the trailer that you welcome families. I saw a lot of little children climbing on very precious exhibitions. So what do we need to look out for when we're welcoming those visitors? So we were really excited to introduce children to Two Point County. Um, and I think uh, it's just felt like such a natural fitting, a natural place for them to be. Uh, and with children, we've been shooting family groups, we've introduced school trips and all sorts of, they're kind of like little agents of chaos and they make a right mess of the museum, don't they? But we've also introduced a lot of other character types, like the professor, he's pretty cool. Yeah. So he, he likes knowledge, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, so when professors come in, you need to focus a bit more on education because they're gonna donate money based on how much they learn about all of your exhibits. And then you, if you've got frozen items, you'll yeah, get... get the Yetis. I yeah. love them. I love yeah. the frozen exhibits particularly. So you always have to maintain your exhibits. So with the frozen items, you need to have your freezer cooler. Um, and then you'll get yeah. Yetis come to visit. So if I have all these visitors, how do I keep them happy throughout the game? So I particularly like love decorating. So for me, I keep my and visitors keep happy by making a beautiful museum. Exhibits. So I... <laughs> looking for the option, customization options, the lighting, like decorative museum, items. Aquarium. So try and make a really incredible like space for them to enjoy. Some yeah, Joe's there. museums are, are usually a work of art, uh, whereas oh. my museums, uh, I guess my philosophy is more, you know, fill their minds with wonder, empty their wallets. Oh, that's right. more my approach. Yeah, that's so straight off. My, no, my museums tend to end up being a bit of a hellish labyrinth where visitors have to go through about five different gift shops uh, before they can escape the museum. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, they still have a good time, they just leave with no money. So in another world you would uh, be the, managing a theme park the also. Last gift well, exactly. Gift shop. Yeah. They, uh, they get wrong. Get it. So is each museum restricted Make to sure one exhibit type? 
So you can actually put any muse uh, any exhibit in any museum. So we designed the game like this because we wanted the players to really have freedom to build and design the museum however they wanted to. And I saw definitely something new, which are unique fish in the game. So can you tell me more about the creation of these odd sea creatures and how we can enjoy the fruits of that labor? That person does so not play games. So we have lots of fun coming really? up with the ideas for the fish. I think with the exhibits in our what game, sometimes we kind of pull on pop culture references, sometimes it's an idea for animation, a joke or a pun, but with the fish, we kind of leaned quite heavily on real life reference but then try to inject two-point humor, humor and charm into it. So, like, for example, we've got a pufferfish. He's my personal favorite. He's very cute. He's got goofy eyes, puffy cheeks, and you can actually get him as a uh, plushie in the gift shop, which is super cute. We've got the clownfish. He's small. He's got a red nose, uh, so that's quite, like, on the nose. Uh, <laughs> uh, we've also got, like, the bull shark, who's kind of scary looking. He's a shark with a bull ring, and you actually have to keep him separate, or well, I do, because he does eat the little fish. Okay, so talking about fish, let's talk about fish romance. I always wanted to say that on an Xbox broadcast. No, but seriously, how do we keep the fish population healthy? Yeah, so uh, I mean the whole aquarium management feature as a whole, there's quite a lot of depth to it really because there's all these different types of fish and they all behave in different ways and they all have different characteristics. Um, and you're having to think about like, do I have enough filters in the aquarium to, to, to keep them going? Do I have the right types of food for the different fish that I've got in there? Is the aquarium the right temperature for them? Because all the fish have different needs, different requirements. Um, so there's quite a lot of depth to it. Like the aquarium management as a whole, it's almost a game in itself. Um, um, and so, yeah, you're having to think about how do I keep them healthy? Because, you know, we, you can even name your, your individual fish oh, and get quite attached. You know, oh, that's it's, uh, Clive the fish. That's my favorite fish. Don't get me attached, please not. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, while you're nurturing them, uh, you know, if you give them a nice little secluded area to hang out with, then uh, maybe fish romance will blossom and maybe you'll get... You know, nice little baby fish. <laughs> okay. Exactly. So just one follow-up question. My name, the name of my fish is called Bartholomew. If I want to know what he needs as food, what he really likes, where do I find it? Like, is there a fish tab or? Oh yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. There's lots of info. Yeah. yeah. Lots of information. Yeah. yeah Interesting. You... And then, how do you actually level up the whole museum? Right. Yeah. So, so as you begin to expand your museum you're going to want to go on more expeditions to find a wider variety of exhibits to have in your museum. And of course, as you get more to add to your collection, you're having to think about where should I put them relative to the things that I've already got? How's it affecting my layout? Maybe I need to reorganize my whole museum layout. Um, and as, as, as you get more things, the, the visitors will want to stay for longer in your museums. Uh, you're going to need to put down, you know, cafes and, and, you know, other facilities to keep them happy. Uh, otherwise, the kids will get bored and then they'll leave and the parents will be really angry. And um, so, yeah, you need to build up your collection of exhibits uh, and, and just keep, um, keep those guests staying as long as possible. Uh, and, and the thing we were really keen to do with museum is what we found is people get quite attached to their museums over time because as you build up that collection and you're having to look after them, right? Because you don't want your fish to die. Follow you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want your frozen caveman in ice to melt because uh, they'll yeah. ruin it. Um, then, then you get quite attached to your museum and you know all of the hours you've spent noodling around laying things out. Uh, and so. What we do is we keep giving you reasons to come back to each museum, uh, which is great because I think you, you do really feel like it's become your own thing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming. And everybody who is here at Gamescom can play the game, actually, either at the Xbox booth or at the Sega booth, which is in the same hall, Hall 7. I love that we're neighbors. But then last but not least, I think you can wishlist it at home as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Now, to the newest chapter in the Life is Strange saga and the supernatural murder mystery it resolves around. Oh. Check out what you can expect from Max Caulfield and the gang in this new gameplay walkthrough. Max Caulfield, the girl who could rewind time, is back. Let's thrash, Chakabra.
But when oh one of her God. new friends, Safi Llewellyn Fayad, is murdered in the grounds of Caledon University, Who plays Max these finds games? that her chaotic power has changed. No one plays these now, games. Now, Max must shift back this, and forth this is to a reveal money the truth of her friend's murder. Game. In an attempt to save Safi no before one plays it's this. too late. Once Max's new power manifests, she can send a pulse out from her fingertips at any game, time. You need help. While pulse is active, she can peer through to the other world, seeing the differences between the timelines clearly. People and objects in the other timeline appear as dimensional echoes, allowing Max to avoid watchful wow. eyes when shifting. So original. Good thing I can keep an eye on Alderman from here. Wouldn't want to show up right in front of him. What the hell? While Pulse shimmers around her, she can also see places where the veil between the two timelines is at its thinnest. These shift points are where she can push through to the opposite timeline to help her investigation in a multitude of ways. Wow. Oh. Do you need me to hold something or? Actually, yeah. I need an Allen wrench. Got one around here? This no, would have been way I better as a TV call, show. She took it back. Then again. If game. you can go grab that from her, I'll hold oh, like this could be to solve a puzzle, you know? convince a character to reveal a secret, or retrieve an object lost in one timeline by borrowing it from another. Better give this wrench to Moses. Borrowing it. Shift points work in both directions, so you can Never shift back returned. and forth from the same spot. So I found this guy named Alan, but he didn't know anything about a wrench. No, Max, not literally Alan. It's... Oh. <laughs> you are a lifesaver, Max. Dad joke aside. So funny. I'll never apologize for my dad jokes. If you're worried oh about losing God. track of which timeline you're in, well, Max herself may get confused too. Have you talked to Reggie since yesterday? Reggie? Crap! Wrong Loretta, Max. In the options, you can toggle a UI indicator every time you shift, confirming the reality you've just arrived Dead in. Living. As well as there being visual cues such as cheery Christmas oh. decor in the timeline where Safi is alive. Most importantly to Max's investigation, everyone you meet has an increasingly divergent duplicate in the other timeline. Why not just live in the better Depending timeline? Depending on which timeline you're in, they'll react to Max and why even, her Why even solve the mystery? Very why not just, you know, A grief sodden conversation get out. in one timeline may unlock an unexpected heart to heart in the other. Grief is hard. No game. The trick is not to let it change your character. Everyone at Caledon is hiding something. And Max is the only one with a viewpoint unique enough to unravel those secrets and the determination to so They all don't the want to be in that timeline. Costs. That's what they're Everybody's hiding. talking about her like she had a heart attack or a car accident. But she was murdered. Someone murdered her. I don't know how we're expected to just be okay with that. Max has never been so powerful or in so much danger. The fates of her friends and of two timelines are at Max's fingertips. Um, okay, what's this? This wow. This is wow, this looks, this looks kind of cool. Ooh. Wait. Wait. Is this a wow MOBA? Is this even an RTS maybe? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, okay. 
So like, what is this? What, where's the gameplay? That's cool and all. But like, what, what is it? She needs some chapstick. No, it's just it's just a trailer for an expansion. World of Warcraft has had a massive impact on the gaming world, as well as myself since it launched Never nearly it. two decades ago. And here to give us a glimpse into their plans for the latest expansion I have never played within it. the three-part World Soul Saga and the next 20 years of World of Warcraft, we have two excellent humans, and thankfully not orcs, sorry, oh. Horde, from the team at Blizzard. Please, Ian and Tina, introduce yourselves. Hi, uh, I am Tina Wang, associate art yep, director. Yeah, the cameras, cameras over here. Uh, no? Super excited okay. to be get uh, to be here and getting to chat do that? with the Xbox community. He doesn't Hi, know where to look. I'm Ian Hasekostas, uh, game director on World of Warcraft. Really hyped to be here in Cologne at Gamescom, and excited to be part of the Microsoft family. Even though we're just a humble PC game, we've been welcomed into the Xbox fold, and it's wonderful. No, I'm so excited for you guys to be here, especially as today is such a huge day for World of Warcraft. Can you tell us what's going on? Uh, we've got a little, little thing or two brewing, I think in something like eight hours and ten minutes, but who's counting? We're going to be <laughs> launching early access of The War Within Ooh, early to be followed access. a few days later by the global release. No, it's, I'm so excited for it. And to kind of get it hyped up at Gamescom on the booth over here, we have got one of the coolest experiences I think I've ever had at any ga gaming booth. It is the Escape from Dalaran, and as like a big WoW fan, it was incredible. Have you had a go? Yeah, it's like, so this is a four-minute yeah. VR experience. You're like, you know, strapped in to this motorized device. You have air jets blowing in your face to simulate the air rushing by you, and you are soaring That's through Dalaran cool. in the middle of a surprise attack launched by the forces of Zalatath and the Meridians cool. that very much mirrors <laughs> what players are going to experience at the start of the War Within in the days to come. That dude yeah, knows it's stupid. You did mention that this is the start that of a brand new era for World of Warcraft. <laughs> that like... Can you tell us the new features and what oh, you can expect God. with the War Within? Yeah, so the War Within is our 10th expansion and it, I mean, I'm biased, but it's going to be a banger. Like fun, it's really, it's <laughs> the beginning of the World Soul Saga, which is the greatest story we've ever tried to tell. And it's a story so big that we needed to make three expansions to tell it fully. And so the way this, the way this kicks off, to. Um, champions and heroes around the world have been seeing these troubling visions, hearing things that sound like the world herself crying out for aid, crying out in pain. And as they investigate the source of this phenomenon, that journey leads them towards a land that is known as Kazalgar, a mysterious island off the coast of Kalimdor, yep. where they may come under a surprise attack and begin to <laughs> see the face of their foe. So and that is one Zalatath. And so it's a, it's, it starts out as a mystery, and that mystery will lead players into the underground of Azeroth, into, towards the heart of the world itself, into just fantastical environments and it's just going to be an incredible adventure no, I, I can't wait and tino i know you've got a load of brand new features that are going to be coming with the expansion can you tell us a little bit more about that yeah i mean ian mentioned the zones one of the things that we really love about world of warcraft is that the world is such like a main character of it right so one of the key things coming out is these uh zones and they're definitely some of the most ambitious and unique that we've ever created for world of warcraft uh, for instance, you know, delving underground, that's a unique challenge. And so while we have uh, zones that meet player expectations with like the ringing deeps where we have uh, ancient forges and lava oh, and cool. these beautiful caverns, yeah. we also have an incredible zone called Hallowfall where we have this crystalline ceiling and the crystal that shifts from light to dark. Sweet. And then our deepest zone, Ajkahed, this is where you will find uh, Queen Ansarek herself, you know, in partnership with Zalatath. And uh, you get to see the height of the Nerubian Empire. Yeah, no, and also, there's like, of course, one of the big things with World of Warcraft as well, dungeons. Can you tell us about a few of the new dungeons that we're going to have, right, in the War Within? 
Oh yeah, uh, so one of the uh, fun ones as part that you get to experience as part of the story is um, this one that's the, the, in, the rookery that you find on uh, the Isle of Dorne. And so you get to experience part of the culture of Castle Garden seeing these uh, riders, these storm riders. So uh, that one is super fun. And then we, in Halifax, one another favorite would be one where you actually well, on an airship. Normally. So you get to fly around. There's epic battles. And you see that glowing crystal just in the backdrop. Is that yes. crystal? Oh, sorry. No, I was going to no, no, say, when we were setting out to like build these underground environments, like one of the challenges was making sure that it didn't feel claustrophobic, didn't yeah. feel oppressive. Like the zone of Halifax, it is so vast an underground space that the inhabitants need airships to traverse it. And so it's like when you're down there, it's like you're in this underground world unto itself. No, and it's, it was really cool. One of the really cool things we were talking about it a little bit earlier on was that the crystal changes, doesn't it, to impact the gameplay? Yeah. Which I, I'm really excited for. Um, what other features do you have coming with the expansion as well? So one of the things that we've built is uh, Delves, which is a new feature for the expansion. And something that is a priority to us for Delves is that it really caters to um, a group of our uh, our audience that historically has been a little underserved by the end game progression loops yeah. that we have for those who maybe raid or do mythic plus so these ones they are outdoor world players as we call it we want them to feel like you're adventuring through the world and you come across just this uh, mysterious location whether you're diving into a sinkhole or uh, seeing some tracks lead into a dark cave we want you to be able to uh, encounter these and still increase the difficulty level as you play so that you nope. can uh, progress your item level week to week. So Delves nope. are the, like their handcrafted week experiences. Week. Yeah, there are 13 today. locations around week the zones week. of the war within, and they're really meant to be a new alternative to dungeons, yeah. raids, and PvP as like a new pillar of endgame progression. Whereas before, as Tina mentioned, if you're someone who's mostly a solo player, you have maybe one or two friends, you don't do the larger group yeah, content, yeah. You could, you know, enjoy the story, you could quest, but at some point your journey would unfortunately feel like it came to a stopping point. And we want to make sure that all playstyles feel welcome and feel like they have progression. And that's that's something, oh. you know, as we think about the features that we're offering in our new Better expansion, like, a players, lot of it is about playing groups. the way playing the game the way you want to play it, having that flexibility to you know that caters to your playstyle. So like a couple of other major features are warbands which for once unifies the progression uh, on most fa facets among your alts. So instead of having every character needing to earn reputation separately or their own currency, your, all of the characters on your account are now part of a warband. So the first thing you see when you log into World of Warcraft, the War Within, is going to be not just one character standing there stiffly, but multiple characters huddled around a campfire representing your band of adventurers that you're taking into Azeroth. All that grinding, getting all your characters ranked up and leveled up, to seeing them all together would be amazing. It's honestly quite yeah. sentimental to see them all <laughs> hanging out. I have to make sure I do all the transmogs like, all correctly and just make sure they all look great. Exactly. And, and like, we've already seen people like taking screenshots and sharing them of like, this is your lineup. And then, yeah, like, I mean, we've, we've reimagined the way flying and traversal work in World of Warcraft. There's a like dynamic physics-based system called skyriding yeah. that's more than like double the speed of what flying used to be back in the day. And so like just getting from point A to point B should feel exciting. It should feel like an adventure. And that's what we're trying to offer. I always used to love that. I still remember the first time Burning Crusade where I got my flying mount for the first time and I had like 60% move speed. And I was like, I'll get yeah. there eventually. <laughs> just give, give me some time. Yeah, th these are more like 600%. Oh yeah, that's, so. that's gonna be way faster. Just do some tricks and blitz Just across. a bit. Yeah, that's no, amazing. Um, one of the other big things with World of Warcraft is there was a perception for like older players and like players that people have never played before the War Within, you've kind of aimed to change that. Can you tell us a little bit more? What can players expect when they log in for the first time? Yeah, I mean, really, it, it's features like what we've just been talking about. It, it's, you know, making sure that there is a deep solo experience, if that's what you want. If you only have a little bit of time to spare, those delves take 15 to 20 minutes. Of course, if you want to, you know, if you have hours on a weekend, there's an entire world to explore. We have hardcore raids to challenge, you know, the, 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 the boldest of adventurers and their friends as they coordinate to overcome these challenges. But I think, you know, World of Warcraft is a game that can be played in so many different ways today to suit your, you know, preferred content, play style, available time, and that's something that we really want to just keep doubling down on. Yeah, no, yeah. Right. a lot of people, when they think about World of Warcraft, they think, oh, it's like too big, there's too much stuff yeah. to do, but really it's like, it's a world and that everyone can play the way that is fulfilling to them. 
Yeah, and there's also opportunities just to hop straight into the new content as well. It's one of the things I've always liked. Like, our whole Xbox On team, when Classic came back out, we all hopped back in for one of those reasons. Exactly. And I think, as any, any WoW player knows, you know, a new expansion is the perfect time to come back to WoW. I think the war with it in particular, because of the fact that, you know, it's kicking off this brand new story arc, We've also revamped the new player experience, the level up experience from 10 to 70 that gets you to the War Within to be our, our latest expansion, Dragonflight. Yeah. So you're if you're coming back or you're coming in for the first time, you are playing the latest, newest content WoW has to offer, learning the ropes and joining the rest of the world in the War Within. No, I'm really excited. And also, World of Warcraft, I can't believe I'm saying this, is coming up to its 20th anniversary what does that feel yeah. like being a part of the wow team what is the one they putting this on console why it is, is this at the uh, xbox humbling, games truly. I have, you know, showcase playing the game for all is this on years. xbox I've, I've been on the or what team for 16 years now. like what's like the, the like it's games from but like adult life has, has xbox really been at games by this game is where and we're it, watching honor. it and i think you know it's i'm so excited to celebrate Just that 20th anniversary coming up but also kick off many many years to come yeah yeah, mm -hmm. I'm also a long time veteran in the game, playing since the beginning, playing since Warcraft 3, and been on the team like 14 years now, and there are so many of these stories on the World of Warcraft team, and you can see that in the, what we put out there, just people putting like their passion and their history with the game into everything that we make. No, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like, I personally love it. I can still remember growing up playing from the Burning Crusade, Wrath the Lich King, and it's so exciting to hit that 20 year mark. Yep. But for players 20 that are years. looking to get involved in World of Warcraft for the first I've time and become part of the community, years. what can they do right now? You have the yeah, best I mean, gear, so, right? You know, we're, we're talking about an expansion. I've been playing for 20 years, so you have you can everything play for unlocked, free right? In our starter edition, you can level up to 20. Uh, you can play for 20 years, and you know, just go to WorldOfWarcraft.com, download BattleNet, install it, jump <laughs> in, and check it out. No, I also, I'd really recommend it. It's one of my favorite games of all time, and it's no surprise it's coming up to the 20-year anniversary. Um, do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with the fans? Just, it's just, it's, it's just such an exciting moment, really. Buy the uh, store mounts. Coming up on, on 20 years, but also Buy the beginning wow this tokens. next step in our, in our journey. Um, the team has Spend been working all on War Within money. for years. We have so many years of content ahead that we have mapped out, that we have planned out. It's going to be this incredible journey narratively in terms of the world we're building, in terms of the features. And just we're excited to welcome everyone in to begin it with us and buckle up because it's going to be a heck of a ride. Yeah, no, I I'll honestly, thank you so, so much. I've got one, one also final question. Horde or Alliance? Oh, wow. Depends on my mood that day. Fallout so, 76. Safe answer, safe answer. That is the same. What about you, Tuna? My, my mood is more often Horde. Horde. <laughs> um, it, it's shifted over time. Currently, I'm more playing Alliance. See, see, that, see that's why I like. Always the Alliance. I've, I've been Alliance since day one, right? And uh, I will stick to that with the War Within. But honestly, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it, you taking us through the War Within. Uh, but here, uh, also, just a pro tip to avoid your own War Within. Please check out World of Warcraft, the War Within expansion, when it launches August 26th. Pre-order now. Up, we'll give you a tour of the Xbox booth right here at Gamescom. Check out what studios have in store for fans here. And also, we celebrate a decade of Elder Scrolls Online with a look at the latest chapter, Gold Road. We also unveil the real name of Project Bird's Eye. But first, it's time for a cinematic horror experience. This is the casting of Frank Stone. The casting of this Frank Stone. This place is like super duper creep town, right? Everything's still so fuzzy about what happened, but there's one thing that always just stuck in my mind. What the hell? Sorry. It's a quick time event game. That's all it is, it's all quick time events. Look. What? I'm coming! This is right when my dad came face to face with Frank Stone. Ah! I think you're starting to see what we're up against. Your call, Chris. Drugstore. I don't want to risk missing oh. our chance. Twitch has sure. to play the game Curiosity for you. Twitch cool. chat can play Check the game for you. You don't even have to, don't even have to be there, just I put it, put up the game on your screen. Dream and just walk away. Where would you choose to live with Couple hours, the game will be a uh, game will be completed. Not a 
okay, are you? I'm sleepwalking through a nightmare and I just can't seem to wake up. Damn. There's no reward for me when I've done what I've got to do. Ouch call. This is insane. I can't live like this anymore. I, I you want to hit X this time? This Go ahead. Hit X this time. It's a Something. Oh, you want to hit Y oh. instead? All right, that works too. What is that? That is Frank Stone. Welcome everybody to the Xbox booth. This is our home for Gamescom 2024. There is so much to do here. There's so many experiences. We've got Xbox, Bethesda, Blizzard, and Activision all under one roof. We have so much to see, so I think we should just split up. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Over here at the Age of Mythology retold section, you can get your photo taken with some certified gods and goddesses. But yeah. over here's something even cooler, because we've actually got some game stations set up where you can play test the game. This right game looks pretty good. Behind these walls, that game fans are good. experiencing, I think, the most anticipated Diablo expansion 4? of this year. Diablo most 4, most anticipated Vessel expansion. I can't wait to dive into the dark the only and expansion. slay swarms of enemies if I manage to do so. I think only time can tell, and speaking of time... It's time to check out Diablo Immortal, because we just can't get enough of it around oh here. My God. At the Diablo Immortal section, you'll be able to play the game itself on the little setups here, but also set a leaderboard time. Can you buy? You potentially win an incredible can you spend your money on... Looks unbelievable. Like, like, do they give you there? unlimited credits? The Doom Slayer has already graced many an Insta-Story. You cosplay being a whale at the station, or what? The booth of Doom, like, the like... Dark Ages. Hey, what? Fans can also celebrate 10 years of the Elder Scrolls Online by checking out the latest chapter, Gold Roads, as well as catching a rare yeah. glimpse of an Elder Scrolls replica. There's only one of two in the world. We play Elder if you brave enough, you can even grab a photo with Thelia herself. World of Warcraft, the war within, takes on new meaning when you strap yourself into one of these ultra-immersive devices. Let me tell you, it's my third ride in a row, and That's I'm pretty really, cool. really baffled by this It experience. would not surprise me at all if Make Disney sure did check something this like this soon. And check out the expansion. Mm -hmm. And of course, it just wouldn't be Gamescom like without the Xbox Game Pass Everyone's and the Game Pass seats. experience. Where here, our attendees can actually win themselves some prizes by slapping that big green button. That's a great idea. They should do that. that. You guys enjoy the rest of the show? Disney should do that. Come on. Have some interactive experience. Kill Knight. Another roguelike? Ooh, this looks way better than the other one, maybe. Twin stick shooter. Five Eldritch Slayers. Oh, yeah. Solitude. Entanglement. Viscera. Echelon. Reflection. Devastating loadouts. Oh, it's not a roguelike, maybe. Oh, this looks like a lot of fun. This looks like fun. This looks good. Global leaderboards. Oh, okay. That looks really good though. This year, the Elder Scrolls Online celebrates 10 years. That, that looks really wrong. good. But here to give us the latest from the franchise, please welcome oh, right, right. the Elder Scrolls President Matt Fyrell and Creative Director Rich Lambert himself. How you, do, how you doing? 
Great. Great. Uh, yeah. great to be here. It's great to be here in the Xbox booth here at Gamescom. Yeah, I mean, you guys are no strangers to Gamescom in general. So you're aware of the behemoth scale of everything. But I mean, this this is something else for the Xbox booth. It's great to have like a whole team together for it, which is yeah. which is awesome. And uh, you guys are on the booth as well, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. But what I want to get into is the fact that it is 10 years. That's that's really special for a game to, to go for that long. And you guys thought, well, let's make a big deal out of it. Let's celebrate. So how are we doing that in game? Yeah, well, you know, it's been uh, 10 years since we launched, but it's been uh, like 18 years since we founded the studio. So we've been working on this game a long Forever, time. Forever, yeah. <laughs> and, Rich, and Rich and I were both here in the very beginning. So, uh, but yeah, we're, we're celebrating. Um, uh, obviously, we're here at Gamescom. Uh, we've done some uh, some great community events outside the game. We had a huge one in Amsterdam that, that you were at. It was a lot of fun, I've got to say. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well over a thousand people. Just a couple weeks ago, we had a bit, another big one in Germany. Yeah, the tavern. Uh, the tavern, uh, also huge with nice. uh, live music and uh, just a huge fe multi-day festival. And then uh, we've done other stuff, too. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's countless, right? We've got yeah. new things planned. You know, in the future, you know, we're going to be at uh, TwitchCon and then... Also, we've got an Australia event coming up, too. So. Yeah, and, and inside the game, you know, we've had uh, just back-to-back -back events just c celebrating 10 years. So we've, we're giving lots of free stuff away to players in the game, and it's all a lot themed around different chapters that we've had over the years and different characters and, uh, <sighs> and everything. So it's, it's just we're really trying to do, Gold you know, Road. pull out all the stops Elders and have, uh, have a great inside-the-game oh experience, and, but then also bring it out to the, to the fans out, out, out in the real world. Well, let's talk about that outside of the game uh, perspective because you do have a pretty substantial uh, yeah, little segment really cool, over yeah. there. Uh, why did it feel right to make sure that you guys were here at Gamescom? Well, you know, uh, Germany is a, is a huge player base for us. I think it's the second biggest a a after the United States. So we've been coming over here for many, many years. I mean, it's uh, wait, that looks really I think cool. 2013 before launch was our was our first year here at Gamescom and. We've had community events here longer than we've had She's community resident. events in America. <laughs> right, right, yeah. uh, seriously, so Germany Why aren't they is, uh, using the headsets? Oh, whole, this guy knows is, what he's doing. Very, very okay, there we go. You know, in our hearts Two people. And, uh, and to the success of the game, and we like to come out and thank Three, them. Three, four, yeah, five people? Huge presence okay. in the booth. It's, it's unbelievable. Like, there's people lined up all around. You know, we've got some cosplayers here. Um, it's just this really Can amazing... Can you stand there for as long as you want? You got, like, a time limit or We something? get to meet the players. What if you just stand there all you know, day? Some players, Matt said, you know, we've been here at the tavern since 2013. I bet there's, and like, a demo or something. Really small, right, you can't go that far or, or some And there's shit. people that come every year that we can see and just see how they're... It's like they're, a, how a they're looped doing. experience. It just feels great to see people being, like... 10, 15 jumping minutes. ...jumping so deep into it as well. And it's a huge part of their lives. This is how they've met some of their, their best friends that you know they've spent countless hours in the yep. game just experiencing the incredible tales that you've been able to tell through it so that it's it's an it's a really nice way to connect and meet genuine friends here. yeah and, and it's important here that we've been talking about this for a few minutes now and we're talking about the community because <laughs> yeah. the, the community is the game in yeah. many ways for, for a game to well, last so for funny. 10 years at this level of success right it's just more about the people that play the game at this point than the people okay. that make it. So we never forget that. We very much appreciate it. And we always know when we do have community events and like hands-on and things here, here at Gamescom. That's smart. They like put those little to meet each other things down they, there. Because I guess you can't go into us. the menu like, uh, or something. Their best friends are in the game sometimes. And just to meet them in the real world is awesome. Yeah. But we just happen to be here, right? Like that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the thing, right? Like yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, it's really cool. No so mouse so pads. Years, you've not just been like sitting around letting people enjoy the game. You've been working hard. Maybe it's the like updates. Yeah. glass mouse pad is just the whole thing. The same year as well. But do you want to talk a bit about Gold Road and what's there for players? Probably not the case. Yeah, Gold Road is... The continuation of the story that we started last year with Necro. So it's this story about a new Daedric Prince who's been long forgotten, Athelia. Um, she looks different, she acts different than everybody else, and then it's a bit of a nostalgia trip. It looks better than WoW. Uh, the West Weald, which was also in Oblivion, Test for Oblivion. So um, yeah, it's just it's been really cool to be able to do that and then add new systems as well. We added the scribing system, which allows players to essentially build their own abilities. Um, and really kind of mix and match, you know, those abilities with their builds and then, you know, just change the colors and, and whatnot to really match their roleplay. Yeah, okay. Because that's such an important part of all your players. It's not just about being able to get the DPS meter up. It's it's so much more than that, right? Yeah, you know, it's like... It's all uh, about the DPS. Like, like I joke with Rich a lot, you know, we're talking about scribing, but, you know, we have a roguelike game 
uh, the you know it, 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 infinite archives inside our game right we have so many different things you can do in ESO and uh, in fact years ago I think three or four years ago we started calling it a virtual world like a fantasy virtual world because yeah. that's really what it is it's much more than a game at this point you can log in and play a card game uh, now you can. Uh, uh, I don't know uh, anyone your house and that actively plays and, this game. Uh, though. You know, Antiquities antiquity and, system and PvP. And, uh, right, so there's just so much to do like in this game get, that you can really play all week and do game. different things every day. You guys were and it looks pretty good. It looks, looks better than WoW, to be honest. From my perspective, speaking of housing, you do have a current update available for PC players with the update 43. Console players are going to be able to get hands Update on that 43. pretty soon, but give us a brief overview of what they can expect with that. So, the big new system is home tours, right? It allows players to share their creations with other players, and our housing system is incredible. It's super home deep, tours. it is free form, so there's, not, there's no hook points, okay. there's nothing along those lines. Whatever players can dream up, they can build, they can put chairs on the ceilings, they can cobble together a bunch of things to create new assets. Damn, is that a and home? They, they it do, is. And they make these really cool creations, and now Home Tours Wait. allows them to share that with other people. And those people can go in and yeah. view these homes and like them, and, and like it's it's really going to open the doors for our community. Yeah. Damn, so <laughs> you can have, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the people watching the stream right now, I think, are seeing uh, some housing in game. Yeah. And I just want to reiterate well, is that is this what we're seeing in all our housing system? Like yeah. it could be created you by have, the you players. Pay for all this. And in fact, some of the ones they're going to get to soon are actually created by by players themselves. Amazing. And it's it's unbelievable what what they can do with the with the tools we give them. Damn. Like, That's a good thing you never asked me because mine just always looks like some midlife crisis bachelor's pad. <laughs> I'm like, not very good with. Yeah, it there's either, like so. monster trophies on the wall, like yeah. one chair in the middle of it. It, it looks really sad, but with this update, wow. I think I'm going to have to try and up my, my housing chops and it's really, make something just, look good. <laughs> just going through and exploring Damn. and seeing what other players are doing is just so inspiring, right? Like, it's amazing. This is actually it's really like, cool. This is the only thing that's getting updated, wow. though, because we mentioned the, the rogue. Look at how big of an area you have. Archives. That's also having a few new flourishes added to it as well, right? Yeah, so we've added a bunch of new bosses into there, some new monster types. We've added in two new arena types, so there's a fire and ice arena in there. We've added new verses and visions, which are the buffs that players earn while they're kind of progressing through. And then, of course, there's tons of new loot, new class sets and whatnot. Amazing. Community being at the heart of your game, uh, we know that they can also be vocal too, which is a good thing, because that's, that's, yeah, passionate. passionate. I like it. Yeah. And that's the way that we can make great games even greater. So there must be some improvements on the way, some feedback you've had lately that you're looking to include in the game pretty soon. Yeah, we well, we uh, ship updates to ESO every 12 weeks. And we've every been doing 12 that weeks. since 2015. So, and Not bad. I'm sh uh, every one of those has had a fix, every few months. Uh, a bug fix, or balanced tweaks, or some kind of Just quality one of bug fix, fix based on feedback we've gotten from the community. Right. And, uh, you know, we can't get to everything quite as fast as the community would like us to, I, I am sure. Yeah. But, you know, we were responsive and we would not be here right now. No, this if, is great. Props to them. The I didn't even know this was still like a, a big so, thing. Uh, things like home tours. Because you know, I don't really right? know There's people that buy it. a huge uh, segment of ESO now of the player base, which really does primarily housing. You know, so we gotten some feedback oh, yeah. from the other players in the game. Like, why are you doing a housing feature? I, I see people and, say housing is end game. Like, yeah, that's, is. that is the end you goal. Know, it's like, it's right? fashion and housing, yeah. right? Like, that's what you hear a lot. And, and, you know, to Matt's point, True. sometimes they're not big things. Sometimes they're just small things. Like, one of the, I think is a big thing that's coming in is probably one of the smallest things. And it's, we now remember the last guild you posted in for the guild stores. So now you can be in five guilds in ESO. And what oftentimes would happen is it would reset back to like that first guild that you joined. So you're posting stuff to the guild store in the wrong guild, yeah. and right, so that's just a pain point, and we, we were finally able to get around to fixing that. Awesome. I do want to make sure that I give you guys a shout out for possibly huh. one of the most memorable trailers from Showcase because your 10 year one was absolutely we incredible. Belong, yeah. Oh, that was yeah. so good. Like, we were all watching it, doing a little mini watch party in the Xbox yeah. on Studio, and we were like, this is great stuff. You know, it, 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 and I think uh, over the years, you know, we, it, this is an Elder Scrolls game, right? A lot of the videos we've done are a lot about combat and fighting giant, you know, monsters and huge, you know, demon Daedric Princes, yeah. and, right? But that video, the We Belong video, 
is more about the heart of the game and that's for, from what the players experience that's much more what the game is to them than just going on quest because of course we have that but you're doing it with friends right you're doing yeah. it with people that you meet in the game and you're starting out and you can't do much and then you get really powerful right that that's the heart of the game right there in that video amazing well when update 43 drops on console i'll make sure to spruce up my home maybe you can tour it see what you think but <laughs> yeah uh, thank you. Thank, thank you guys so much for joining us. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Gamescom. Uh, the Elder Scrolls Online Update 43 is launching September 4th, 2024, so pretty soon. For cool. details on that update, the 10th anniversary plans, and more, make sure that you do tune into the ESO Gamescom live stream, which is kicking off in just over an hour at 6 p.m. CEST, 12 p.m. EDT at twitch.tv slash Bethesda. Now for a refreshing change of pace for the hero shooter genre. That pace is false, by the way. Here now, enjoy the wildly colorful and furious world of Frank Punk. Great. Yo! Hate rules? Frank Punk's here to spice them up! We're the 5v5 FPS that lets you bend the rules with cards. Cards can literally do anything! Oh yeah, so I think I saw they can Trout playing this. They can change the weather. This is really unique, like interesting concepts based, they even interact based on the other. like Valorant CSGO type of game. I think this is really good. You can blast people up even more. Or find foes when they try to be sneaky. Crush them with massive force. Damn. That doesn't look broken remember, at all. Remember, they got tricks of their own. If you're down on luck, then you better have a good team with you. No, this game looks good. I want to try it. Time. That's pretty cool. Steam and Xbox. Game Pass. Okay, Black Ops. Age of Mythology. I'll play that. Fallout. No. Indiana Jones. I'm gonna play that. Avowed. I don't know. Manor Lords. Not really. Yep. Gonna play that. Agent Tony, that looks really good. EA Play. But you have to download the EA app, which is stupid. Why do you have to do that? Like, why do I need to download it's on, if it's on, like, Game Pass Connected or whatever? Like, just be on, like, the Xbox Store. Whatever. What's this? Another prison guard. Good luck, mate. <laughs> You're gonna need it. There's one escape pod left. But you're not the only geezer bolting after it. Another roguelite? Alright. There's a lot of wankers between you and the sweet taste of freedom. Just a bunch of psychos got into the same prize. A lot like me. <laughs> so sorry. You might make it farther than the last pick I'm at. He even took down some big boys along the way. Yep, no, okay. But the last guard, well, they ain't exactly dead. Ooh. He died. Looks like one of you guards finally put some big boy pants on. Brilliant. This is just getting started. Pretty, uh, comic y art style. Not bad. Interesting. Oh, Ooh, so close. Maybe the next guard will do better. Okay. 
looks good. Well, Redacted looks absolutely amazing. We're super excited to be officially revealing the game today. It's from the minds behind the Callisto Protocol, and it's a frenetic roguelike with a darkly comic twist. Here to tell us more, please welcome the head of Striking Distance Studios, Steve Paputsis, and creative director, Ben Walker. Guys, welcome to Germany. How are you? Thank you so much for having us today. It's great to be here. Awesome. This I know, so this isn't the uh, the first time that we've actually seen the trailer. We've, been, we've seen it when it was under the name, code name Project Birdseye. Can you tell us a little bit about the secrecy and about Redacted now? Redacted. Sure. So when we first started thinking about this That's project, the name of the we game? started prototyping from the controller out. We were really interested in creating fast, responsive controls that worked for melee and shooting and our energy mechanic. Just don't so have any we input were developing delay. that, we then talked about the types of games we liked and we found ourselves playing a lot of roguelikes. What we liked about that particular style of game was the replayability and yeah. the experimentation that occurs. So you have strategic yeah. and tactical choices. So all of those things kind of came together. Roguelikes are and great. As we were prototyping it, we thought, well, let's see what people think of this. So we released that trailer that you mentioned for Project Birdseye. And that was met with uh, positive reception. So we're here today uh, with you, thank you, to announce the official name of the game, which is oh. Redacted. Oh, it is Redacted. Oh, okay, it's, cool. it's, uh, it's amazing to see it. And I know we're going to be All going right. through a load of gameplay as well for, for viewers to be able to check out. But it looks amazing. So I guess you're so trying good. to like, I mean, escape you guys mentioned it there. It prison. sounds like you had a lot of fun making the game. And certainly it's a wee bit of a departure from the Callisto protocol and what players might expect from you guys. But as we look at some of the gameplay, can you tell us a bit more about Redacted and then what can we expect to look forward to? Sure, absolutely. So again, it's a roguelike style game and it's focused in a prison. So one of the yep. things that we thought would be really Good. fun was Good. developing uh, the story around what it would be like when a when a zombie outbreak occurred in a prison. So yeah. not only are there yeah. workers at the prison, but there's also Isn't inmates. This? So we thought that was an interesting idea. So we started developing along those lines. Isn't this idea exactly what some of those Black Ops Six is doing with zombies? That I mentioned, which are the Everything. experiments that we have, which are our upgrades and the various Just skills and meta currencies that you can use in game to really change your play styles as you go through the experience. Um, you so mentioned like it could have just been the prisoners. They could have figured out something else in the game, but aren't they? Whatever. Can you explain to us what rivals are and how how that's going to affect the gameplay? Absolutely. So the idea again with the rivals was, hey, you know, there's other people in this prison. So what would they be doing during this outbreak, right? So we thought it would be interesting if there was a race to one escape pod. So not only are you racing against yep. the rivals, but you're also oh. uh, having to deal with them. So they can do things like have room modifier attacks where they can yep. slow you down or impede your progress. Uh, but you can also counter. You want a time limit and then? Oh, at the bottom, at the bottom. Control I see. And try to slow race them down to and the impede escape their progress. Pod. Not only that, but then you can also square off against them in one-on-one -on -one fights. So think of them as like bosses as you go through the experience. And so not only do you have the challenge of the various That's monsters cool, within like, this game, but you also have to deal with these rivals who are trying to you could, escape. Yeah, and you, you could like find each other in the same room type of thing and you have to the fight them. Play, can't you? Yeah, That's pretty like, cool. What that, if they're still standing and what's like they're playing the game them. alongside you type Absolutely, of thing. Absolutely, yeah. Is well. it like multiplayer like that? A that's that's a, a great like, that's a great concept. That, that hasn't been done before. That's pretty cool. Maybe Ben, you could show us how that's going to be quite a core part of the gameplay in Redacted. Sure. Uh, so this is actually the area where you start when you die and you come back. Um, the attack and on the team, instantly. we like to say Damn. death is the opportunity to come back stronger. Nice. Uh, and so, you know, we have our punching bag here. Uh, as you can see, these are all our terminals where you buy your permanent upgrades. Uh, on the right, we have all of our currencies. The top one is the credits, which is only spendable and, and remain uh, used inside the game. Yeah. And then we have our uh -huh. contraband here, which is for our permanent skills. So I can purchase not one what, of these. Not sure why you said it that way, it on the side. but okay. So you actually build your own kind of loadout here, and I can actually buy more slots as I progress as well. So we have about 45 of these across five pages. So there's okay. really a lot to dig into here. Yeah. That's a lot of different combinations for you to use. <laughs> Um, what other Mets currencies have you got uh, on the right hand? Because we can see them on the right hand side of the screen. What a lot of they? currencies. Which one's one is the premium on? one? Yeah, so over here we have is the, it the that first one, IDs, the green one. Purchase suits with. And as you can see, we have the lots red of suits one. to choose from. That looks so cool. 
Have you got a favorite one? This is one of my favorite ones, the pilot suit. Pilot so suit. I'll purchase it now. Um, and then every Guard suit has an initial standard box uniform. That it you. doesn't do and anything. And then also you can go and increase the upgrades to it as well. And so clearing 30 rooms, I'll get to reload my weapon faster. Okay. okay cool. So. So there's a lot of progression okay. opportunities as well. So if you find like your, your own particular play style that you really like, you can hone in and focus on that and be like, all right, this is how I want to approach the next round. Now this looks like an actually yeah, like complete roguelike game. Into how that feels, like not uh, works out releasing with so what, what is, incomplete so what, what else do we have, what else do we have status or whatever. So we have five melee weapons and eight ranged weapons and players can mix and match those any way they like. These are some of my favorites, the dual blasters. Uh, nice. Yeah, and then once uh, the player escapes for the first time, they'll be able to unlock the upgrades for the weapons as well. So it keeps uh, going, and you can keep yeah. going farther, keep getting stronger. Okay. Yeah. And what, what yeah. else is there in the in the in the hub for players to get involved with? So this is where we can transfer currency and also buy transfer things like the first aid currency. station uh, in between levels, which is very very important. Oh, to like uh, so okay, upgrades and stuff. Environment control. Yeah. So as Steve was talking about, this is how you attack rivals remotely. So you purchase the, the upgrades here. Yeah, because we saw this happen a couple times in the gameplay that we saw a little bit earlier, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, exactly. And this will slow them down, it'll stop them, it'll do damage. And I then just, once you buy oh. all of them, you get the next tier of it. So you just keep go upgrading and upgrading. Okay, so there's a, on the screen there, there was something about a combo with the rival attacks. What was that about there? Yeah, so you, when you actually do your rival attack, uh -huh. you select the rival, and then you have to put, you have a limited time to kind of punch in this code. Sick. So there's a little bit of a rhythm to it. Yeah, oh. rhythm game, love that. Yep. Okay, fine. that's so cool. Right, and then the final two we've got are the, what, the re redaction map and the performance review center. What are those? Yeah, so the performance review is a summary of your run. So here you can see what experiments okay, yeah. you used, That's good how to many meta currency elements that you collected, the schematics and the fabrications. Uh, so this is a good way to kind of strategize as you go through, see what you did before and see what, the what you might try to do next time. In addition to that, we have that uh, the watcher log, okay. which actually provides a lot of deep statistics for you. It's fun to kind of min-max and see uh, how you did against the various rivals, which experiments you tend to gravitate towards, and you can see that all here. A lot so of enemies, okay, good. It's fun to kind of dig into the statistical Enemy element types. of the game. It, it's also where I can see people getting so competitive. There's like, going, like Weapons, oh, I can get a faster time than you. I can do better with this setup be more, and see like we'll all see. that kind of comparison. Like I know Actually, like, where's our, the sniper? Our, our, the no sniper. team would do that in absolute ton on stream. How we many Thumbacon <laughs> skills have you got or something? Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, and then we've got the redaction map. Yeah, Ooh. so this, this ties into kind of the mystery of our game. So... Here you're going to find out about the rivals. As you go through the game, okay. you're actually going to find uh, these computer rooms. And when you interact with the computer room, you're going to see these dossiers. And as you go through and redact the unredact War. the information here, you'll actually be gaining positive buffs for yourself. So you're going to be increasing the damage you do against the enemies. You're going to be uh, creating vulnerabilities for them. And so you'll also be doing all that. And in addition to that, you're going to find out more about the rivals and a little bit of their backstory. So it's a key component to really being able to deal with and handle the rivals. Oh, that's awesome. Um, what I do know is cool. we've got a lot more gameplay to check out because it'd be amazing to see all these different like weapons and upgrades uh, in action so you can talk us through it. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, let's check out some more gameplay. But honestly, one of, the, one of the things I love so much about games is when there are so many options for you as a player, and that's what Redacted has for you to progress and improve. Um, so, Bex, what do you think as well? I mean, yeah, I, I'm really enjoying this kind of like the secret element to the dossiers and these rivals. And I really like some of these headings that we've got. There's some interesting topics that I, I'm excited to explore later. Oh, who's this guy? All right. Got a little outline here. Yeah, so uh, you're behind this is your a rival, mysterious they figure that we call Mr. Green. Mr. He, Green. He's a bit of a that cleaner, doesn't make sense. And he's, but he's okay. at the prison. We don't know why. Uh -huh. Hopefully, players are going to find out. But uh, he'll be interacting with you and kind of providing you some insights as you progress through the experience. Okay. And so, yeah, I don't want to give away too much, no. but uh, Mr. Green is mm. a shadowy figure. Okay. Seems like a. Seems like we can trust him right now, but given all of the rivals and all of the other Ooh. people that you've told us about okay. so far, I'm not too. So you can not choose which door you're going You can never into. trust the shadow. Like kind of like Hades. Like, especially one in a prison. That just, just <laughs> doesn't seem to work. Um, 
but we've what is because there's so many options of how to play the game can you kind of run us through some of your favorite builds i think this is us going up against a one of your rivals right oh, now sick. isn't it yep Sorry. absolutely Sorry. so we, like steve mentioned we call our upgrade trees experiments yeah and so we have a total of 115 of those in the game split up against seven uh, across seven categories uh a, a couple of my <laughs> favorites are the biotech uh and mixing that with the electricity or the energy build uh it speeds up rates of fire uh and then uh biotech has a great skill called rot which enables uh, enemies to explode on death nice. so you can see we're using it right here on his uh, main fire oh wow. cool i love an area of effect so that's always helpful yeah there's also like constant combination of using melee and ranged attacks isn't there throughout the gameplay there is and since you don't get to choose which upgrades you get to pick every time you'll find yourself exploring and finding new ones that you weren't expecting uh that turn out to be really fun and oh, so we've a lot of people to play that camera play different angle ways just because they stumbled on a really fun build mm. Yeah, it's always going to be one of the funny bits. It's like, you're going to go, no, I'm going to go use these guns because this is what I want to use. I love them. And then you'll be like, wait, no, that's like the most powerful melee weapon in the game. I'm just going to go melee build or something like that. Yeah. I like it. So, Ben, yeah, you're much more of a corrosive kind of area of effect and rapid fire build. I like that. That's Absolutely. Cool. I'd probably go for something like that over like a strength build or like a uh, close combat kind of build or whatever what do you think you would do see i've always been right i was like keep a distance like yeah. I, I, I played as like, yeah no i was always like an assault rifle player and like fps's i was like kind of keep a distance kind of like kite people um but one thing i want to point out here is there is a glowing corpse which you see throughout the game they pop up in certain locations can you tell us a little bit more about that yeah so that's actually your last corpse exactly where you died on your last run oh i see and he has the exact same build that's the body link so here. at the end once combat's over you can choose to fight him uh, and get back one of your skills but oh. at an increased power level so but it's always risky right because if you had a really good build before uh, he might it might be a hard uh, fight to get to win so you gotta I like pick that. and choose your battle that's really but cool it is a way for you to get something back that you had on your last run that you really liked no, I can just imagine though. I, I just Bex is never gonna see the glowing corpse. Yeah, and this looks annoying <laughs> to fight oh, these fucking things. That's like the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Oh, what thanks, do you mean? <laughs> I mean, yeah, the glowing corpse oh, is great. I love sucks. that element of it's almost like soulsy. You get that reward for going back to the same place, and especially in roguelike atmosphere, I love that as well. I mean, we're seeing so many sick-looking visuals here. Always gonna I do it. Notice some of the symbols from your game's Last Callisto corpse. protocol and lots of um this new art style that we can enjoy as well with our eyeballs which is great <laughs> but what was your philosophy behind this and like damn kind of moving away from close you got shit on right so we wanted to create shouldn't you just that do that in like the first room then uh, you should get like an upgrade the and then really die enjoy. and then so go we're big fans of comic books, do that and fight yourself and, and, and then get like double upgrade or something an irreverent fun tone to this game so we gravitated towards the style and look that you see in the game. It's it's a little bit more vibrant, colorful, and it, and it allowed us to really experiment and play around with the variety of enemies. I think we have over 34 enemies in the game, so we really wanted to just kind of go all out with uh, the colors and everything. So that really worked well oh, for us, and we, we think it, it definitely looks different than the previous you don't game. don't want gray. And the other thing that we really gray liked scale. about this particular game <clears> this like time was other games. we, like, we hello. partnered with a group hello. called Mutato Musica. Unique uh, color. And we wanted to create our own unique music for the game, so we came up with this idea for Future Punk. So the soundtrack is kind of got this arcade punk kind of vibe going on, and uh, we really enjoy it, so we're pretty excited about that. Yeah. Uh, I love that. Yeah, no, Future Punk is definitely something I think I could get into as well. And I love the art style. But uh, Ben and Steve, like, big thank you for joining us well. But if you've got any last words for everyone watching uh, about Redacted. Uh, well, we hope everyone enjoys playing it as much as we enjoyed making it. The team had a yeah, great looks time good. doing that. Okay. Yeah, and I'd like That's to say good. thank you very much for allowing us to reveal the game name today with you. And I want to thank the team at Striking Distance for all the wonderful work they did for this project. Thank okay. You. Yeah. I think I mean, that's yeah, one of the best things I've ever be heard from a dev. Not well. that the we'll team has been be working extremely hard or putting in a lot of work, but that the team really enjoyed making the game. That's what you want to hear. Pre-orders are open right now. So coming up, we've got a sim that is unlike any other sim we've seen before. But first, fans of the first descendant have been not so patiently waiting for more on season oh one boy. well guys the wait is over let's have a look
We managed to fend off our enemy's large-scale attack, but the war is far from over. The Colossus still threatens us, and our enemies are plotting new strategies. Can Ingress ever find true peace? Has Corel really given up on the war? Invasion. After Corel's fleet disappeared, the Volgus began moving from deep within the dungeon to raid the ancestors' facilities in Ingress and reclaim the outpost. Detecting this, Ingress immediately dispatched a scout. That scout's name is Haley. Ooh. Haley, who rose from a supply soldier in the guerrilla unit to a legendary sniper, is now a newcomer in the Descendant Corps. Ruthlessly eliminating enemies with her anti material sniper Damn. rifle. Damn. She Damn. dominates battles with her ability to drop her body temperature and emit cold air when her emotions run high. When shooting from a distance, her weapon's critical hit multiplier increases, making her an excellent fit for Damn. sniper rifles. Big damage character. She possesses sub zero bullets that fire multiple shots in an instant and a storm snare that pushes back and rapidly cools down enemies in front. Above all, Haley's specialty is switching to her anti-material sniper rifle and firing a single incredibly powerful Damn, shot stronger than any other attack. In season one, the Vulgus launches a new strategy, the invasion. Invasions occur randomly in two dungeons of the hard difficulty infiltration operations. Players can choose to enter between the existing operations or the invasions. Invasion dungeons are only available for solo play, Ooh. testing the strength of the Descendants. Three Volgus Legions will block the Descendants with different defense mechanisms. The Quantum Field creates an immortal state, impervious to physical attacks. The Resonance Shatterers cause massive explosions with the energies of RK and the Iron Heart. The Keeper Tile Encryption Device maintains a powerful security system. Invasion dungeons present new mechanics that disrupt the Descendants' operations. Okay. Solve these enemies' mechanisms and swiftly eliminate them. Invasion dungeons are designed for speed runs, and the faster you clear them, the greater the rewards that wow. await. Wow. Looks pretty damn good. After coming in contact with the Iron Heart, Descendants experience an RK resonance phenomenon. This resonance grants the Descendants new powers. It's the season growth inversion reinforcement. Inversion reinforcement is a new growth system Ooh. that resets at the start of each season. It includes okay. five types: hunting, attributes, recovery, survival, and oh, seasons. Oh, okay. So this is the seasonal. Through the inversion reinforcement, seasonal artifacts gain beneficial like they have in for progressing through seasonal content, and can also obtain effects that compensate for their weakness. Each season, we plan to tailor and replace the inversion reinforcement effects, providing effects that perfectly fit the seasonal content. In addition to a new descendant, a new ultimate descendant will be introduced in season one. Ultimate Freyna, who has evolved RK's toxicity wow. into a more powerful weapon, will make her debut. In season one, you can discover Freyna's exclusive story and uncover the tale behind the name of her skill, Room Zero Trauma. Excava is an assault rifle with powerful versatility. It can be obtained through the battle pass and is also available as a free reward. Excava charges voltage when attacking enemies and has a unique effect of firing the charged voltage as an energy grenade. It is a versatile weapon that combines the inherent versatility cool. of an assault rifle with a powerful shot. Frost Watcher is a scout rifle that can be farmed through the Season 1 content. When can hitting enemies from long range, it reduces chill resistance and enhances the damage of one's chill skills making it a perfect fit for Viesa and Haley. If you've prepared a new descendant, ultimate weapon, and inversion growth, it is now time to face the most powerful colossus, Ooh. Deathstalker. Deathstalker lurks in the darkness of the void, targeting the life of descendants. It Damn. is stronger than any colossus encountered so far. To protect Albion from the threat of Deathstalker, we must once again venture into the void, unravel the mysteries within the darkness, and intercept Deathstalker. The first Descendants Ooh. first season begins on August 29th with Haley, a new Descendant, Ultimate Freyna, and the new Ultimate Weapons. New episodes, dungeon content, and void intercept battles await you in Albion. Pretty good. Descendants. The first Descendant, Season 1 Invasion. Doesn't look insane. For free. But... It looks like like good content. More than Anthem at least. Unfortunately. 
My scooter, the ragazzo pazzo. You know the gentleman goes around cleaning the house with his vacuum hose. Name's who? The friends just call me who, though. Besides, we both know you're cheating on me, so it's only fair. I wish I was cheating on you. Oh my god. Day everything. As developers of the relationship testing epic that is the Overcook series, if you know, you know, it seems fitting that they would take on a dating sim in a rather unusual way. Here to tell us more about the quirky home furnishing dating fever dream, this is Date Everything from Sassy Chat Games. Please join me in welcoming co creative lead and executive producer Robbie Draymond, writer, producer, Amanda Hubbard, and lead writing designer point. Ray Chase. All the way over there. Hi, Ray. How are you doing? Thanks so much for joining me. How are you all doing? Day are you having a great Gamescom. Oh. Really, the best Gamescom. And, yeah. you know, just so you and everybody at home knows, uh, I know my name said Amanda, but I'm actually Tiago today. I already um, forgot the name. Our lead the programmer's jacket because <laughs> someone stole my jacket out of my mailbox. So if you're watching this, if you could please bring my jacket back to me, I would appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So all good. Maybe aside from Tiago. Uh, and and uh, yeah. uh, yeah. we'll the <laughs> Oh, Where were you? Where is this shit? Uh, and yeah, we just picked on the music ago. And any we he all stayed Devon it. The last one for my out. No one wants to play this shit. SFO. So get the fuck out of here. And do Oh my god, how long is this? Sting Yeah, yeah. And there add shout out to my or principal is Oh thank god. Venture odds. Kazan. It's helped him save an empire. Deep dive into the first berserker. Kazan. First berserker. Kazan. General Kazan, who once saved the Empire from the Dragonkin, survives against all odds while being exiled under the false accusation of treason. He embarks on an adventure to uncover the truth behind his downfall and seek revenge against his enemies. Heinmach. Kazan's battles emphasizes hardcore action while they feature various combat mechanics. The core principle is see and respond. We put significant effort into creating precise and vivid combat experiences based effort. on this concept. That's not good. Essentially, we, don't like those we designed terms. the game so that the players can observe and decide their actions, providing clear feedback for each decision. It's combat another one of these games. are primarily okay. divided into two phases. The monster's attack turn and Kazan's attack turn. Turns. We aim to make every moment enjoyable. To achieve this, we included various ways to respond to monster attacks. Players can exploit openings to attack or choose to defend or evade when necessary. Ooh, are they gonna show Dark Siders 4 here? May probably not, right? Techniques like just guard and just evade. I hope they which do requires well, precise timing are also available. There is no single correct answer. 
players can experiment with multiple methods. Your unique combat style will develop based on your choices, ensuring that this process effectively leads to defeating your enemies. Preemptive strikes are a key strategy for tackling powerful enemies with ease. When initiating a battle with a brutal attack from behind, Kazan can gain numerous attack opportunities, limited only by his stamina. Both Kazan and his enemies have stamina, and once depleted, they become exhausted until it recovers. In this state, significant damage can be inflicted not only on Kazan, but also on his enemies. Therefore, managing stamina is crucial Good management can create advantageous situations, while poor management can lead to serious danger. Knock him off the edge. Can you knock him off the edge? Hmm. In battles against strong oh, enemies, including boss fights, using stamina strategically is particularly crucial. Inducing stamina consumption or successfully landing high stamina damage Mana attacks lantern. to cause exhaustion is key. Once in an exhausted state, dealing maximum damage through various methods become the core strategy for overcoming bosses. Damn, that's a lot of damage. Additionally, targeting and destroying weak points can inflict significant damage and provide extra attack opportunities. Okay. Kazan is a skilled warrior who okay. can proficiently wield various weapons, yeah. allowing you to experience different combat styles that maximizes each weapon's advantages. This looks pretty good. This is like Currently, this looks like Kazan is equipped with a spear. Although its attack power is somewhat lower, it features long reach, wide range, and impressive combo attacks, making it particularly advantageous in stamina based combat. This looks like an easy version of Elven Ring or Dark Souls or even Wukong probably. It's like an easy version this of This weapon those games. excels at efficiently draining the enemy's stamina and delivering additional damage to exhausted enemies through various methods and combos. Ooh. Damn, you can attack a lot. The Great Sword is another weapon Kazan can wield. It offers the option to charge most actions, favoring slow but exhilarating and powerful strikes. This weapon excels in solid guarding and counterattacks, enabling a satisfying playstyle that can crush enemies before even engaging in stamina battles. Damn. Kazan is an action game that focuses on the fun of character development. As you progress, you'll acquire items and skills, evolving your combat from careful and strategic to powerful and exhilarating. Kazan's journey of revenge Blade is about to begin. Anthem. That, that, that Don't like, miss out on the like chance name to experience the hardcore action of the first Berserker, Kazan, in the technical closed beta test. Starting on October 11th, closed beta, October 11th. Okay. Xbox players can join through the Insider oh, okay. Program. Not bad. It looks alright. Looks pretty good. It's hey, York, it's great to beta. see you. I'm gutted that I'm not seeing you in person, but I hear that you're in Seattle. Yes, it's like the first time in at least Dude, four or five years. Plays that nothing I'm not but make it to in person, which is a huge bummer because I love the show, I love the people. I love the vibe, the gamers, so yeah, but uh, plus we always have a community event where we meet with the hardest core flight sim enthusiasts, but honestly we're 13 weeks away from the launch of um, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, oh. and you know there's almost I thought so this much was to for to make the sure Kuzan that game, perfect, I was so confused. I'm just gonna have to stay okay. home and work on the new set. <laughs> Right. How are you feeling coming cool. up towards? Because I said it's only. Well, this guy's got a Halo away. poster. Yeah, I think I think it's awesome. Helmet. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 or MSFS 24, as we now call it, it's it is the biggest undertaking ever in flight simulation. It's the biggest fleet, the most airports, um, the most sophisticated flight model, the cool. best physics. I need to um, I need to turn the air on. The digital on. twin is taking leaps forward this time. We added seasons, worldwide ship traffic, uh, worldwide oil rigs, heliports, glider airports animals it's 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 a uh, it's massive and in msfs 24 it's the first time that you can exit the aircraft and walk around so we added tons of detail everywhere on earth so it's 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 just huge and on top of that we've added an all new career system where you can pick from dozens of uh, um, authentic aviation activities 
in a career and that adds a completely new dimension to the sim um and so you can be like a firefighter or a firefighter yeah. pilot or a cargo pilot or a, a crop duster pilot or just a passenger passenger uh, airliner pilot and on top of that we added short burst activities like low altitude challenges landing challenges just if you have a little bit of time you can have fun in flight sim that is an insane amount of content i also love the landing challenges i once somehow managed to get one point on them but you know the <laughs> xbox one team will, 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 will laugh at me for it but they are so much fun to do but you may not be in Cologne in person this year, but I know you are very keen to share some goodies with the community. Can you tell us what? Yeah, it's actually one of my greatest joys every year to come to Cologne and to bring something to, to the community right. that has local relevance. So I don't know if you remember last year, we did EBDK, which is the Cologne Bonn Airport. And we launched it alongside some European yeah. cities and a German plane called the DOEX, a uh, big flying boat. The year before we had city update one where we actually had scanned the city of cologne and bonn and dusseldorf and dortmund that's pretty and Hanover, cool so really local cities and we had launched the um young ft in the first all metal airliner in the world and this year we went all in as so i'm happy to announce for launching world update 18 which is the dach region so germany austria and switzerland and we have assembled a huge amount of data for this. So the, we have um, we are launching all new aerials. So these are basically the satellite and aerial imagery that we use for textures of the landscape. Mm -hmm. um, and we're actually using the ones that we're going to launch in the next simulator in November. But we wanted to give a preview to the community. And then we have all new digital elevation maps. They're called DEM. And on the top of that, we have programmetry cities so these are the 3d cities that are that are shown in flight simulator and we have frankfurt am main so uh Ham, mm -hmm. hanau uh and then we have berlin potsdam and Cairo, so mm -hmm. sort of northeast and then in austria we have linz vienna and salzburg and in switzerland we have bern and zurich and Amazing. on top of that we have 116 which we call pois or places of interest or points of interest so famous places and we made nine more new missions that showcase sort of the environment and the region. It's, the, it's one of the biggest updates we've ever done, and I, I can't wait to, to share it with the community. And uh, we've got a trailer, don't we, for, for everyone to check out. All right, let's take a look. Captured in real time, 4K. Cool. Cool, I want to go visit them. So many castles.
cool to stay there. What was that place? Hotel Pilatus Calm and Hotel Bellevue. Actually looked stunning there's so many amazing places to yeah. check out but I know your team does an incredible job with these world updates and I hear this one hit close to home for you yeah thank you so much and I'm honestly I'm so proud that we can basically bring regions of the planets to life um, with these world updates and this particular mm -hmm. one I don't know if you know this but I was actually born in Frankfurt and I as a little kid grew up in uh, in Heinstadt which is near uh, which is near the area and then my mom comes from Darmstadt my brother lives in Buchschlag so when we got the when we got the new data uh, I immediately went into the game and, and the sim and looked at it and I found the house I grew up in the kindergarten I went to I was like and then here's the house my mom grew up in my cool. brother lives over hmm. there so it's it's super cool and it it's amazing always when I see That's pretty cool. how accurate everything is. Yeah, and I, I can imagine when you can now that you can go walk around as well with a new update, it's like you really get into that like nitty bit of green detail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it never ceases to amaze me. Huh. We, we call that the digital twin. The, the, the whole goal is that we have a real one-on-one -on -one representation of the entire Earth. And, the, you know, the world, I always say the world is full of sensors. So there are sensors and satellites and aircraft, your phones, your cars. And we get all this data and we can feed that back into the sim so it's getting better and better over time which is just so cool yeah and now that we've seen the world update can we expect a new aircraft to go Spoil with simulator it? Or from, always for something you know, we call those local <laughs> legends so when we do a world update we we try to basically highlight important things in the history of aviation relative to that region um, so for germany we did a few already we did two junkers and two doniers and today I'm very proud to announce a very special plane from Bremen called the Fokker Wolf 200 Condor. The what? And it was first flown in 1987. <laughs> like, at the uh, time, what it you was the most sophisticated like, right. airliner in the world. And we have a trailer. What's the name of it? Ah, uh, the Fokker Wolf. I see. Oh, okay, okay, cool. That's crazy, no seatbelts. Why do you need seatbelts in a plane? That was actually amazing. I have never seen that plane before in my entire life, but can you unpack its significance for it being included? I bet you never in heard of it either. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's not at all surprising because the, the plane, you know, it came out in 1937 and it was a civilian ah. plane. It made a yeah. famous flight from Berlin to New York. That was the goal to have passengers in one go fly over the Atlantic. At the time, 
typically people flew in seaplanes and they had to take several stops. So this was the first one. And the reason why it could do that is it was very light for its size. It was only 17 tons and it had lots that was of, its lots only of flight. four great engines. And then World War II tanks, started. It flew much higher than everybody else did. So typically planes at the time flew 1,500 meters altitude. This one flew 3,000. So you could go, there's, the air is thinner, less resistant, so you can go much further. So it was a major, major um, step forward. However, you know, the, obviously the war came and then the plane unfortunately just disappeared ah, from yeah. the skies. But um, there's a really interesting story. In 1988, they actually found a wreckage. The plane was considered lost. They found a wreckage huh. near Trondheim in Norway. They raised it, took 11 years to, to 2000, 1999. And um, it was not in good shape, let's put it this way. And then there was a group of volunteers, they called themselves the Condorians, that basically re rebuilt the entire plane from scratch, basically, based on the, the pieces they found. And that was completed in 2021. And that plane is now visible. You can see it in, an, in a museum in, in, in Berlin. And I had, I had followed that story. I called the museum. They allowed us to do a scan. And then we typically try to give something back, right, when we do these, these collaborations with museums. So I asked them, is there anything we can do to help you guys? And they said, hey, York, you know, there is a Swiss collector who spent his entire life collecting all the instruments for the Condor, and he had sort of built in his house a dashboard of the Condor. But yeah. the, the man was at a point in his life where he wanted to part with his collection. So Microsoft actually bought the collection from the collector, gave it to the museum in Berlin, and they integrated it into the Condor. So, hmm. you know, this, well. that, we call it digital preservation, what we do in, in flight sim, right? Um, and, and when yeah. we can connect that to the real world, where people do the real world preservation of planes, it's just one of the most, it's one of the most awesome things, really, for us. No, it's, it's amazing that people are going to get to play that in-game as well, and it really is art imitating life. Um, but thank you so, so much for joining us. I know you're really busy kind of getting the last bits for the update yeah. together, but you've got one cool announcement for everyone, don't you? Yes. Um, so World Update 18, the one we just talked about, is available right now. Oh, wow. Uh, so the sky is calling. Uh, go check it out in Microsoft Flight Simulator and download it today. And just in case you didn't know, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 is releasing on November 19th. And that's also going to be available on Xbox Game Pass Whatever and Xbox means. Game Pass okay, for PC. Cool. So everyone get their hands on it. But York, thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you here next year in Cologne. I will be there next year. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. No, thanks for talking to us. See ya. What's this? Hi, I'm Cody Fignino, producer of Titan Atmosphere. Little name is three. We are very excited to have the game playable at Gamescom this year. But for all of you that can't be here, we wanted to give you a sneak peek at our demo, as well as some exclusive footage. Little Nightmares 3 tells the story of Lo and Alone, two friends trapped within the spiral, a cluster of disturbing places. They will have to work together to survive in this dangerous world full of delusions and escape the nowhere. While Little Nightmares 3 is still playable in solo with an AI, you'll also be able to play with a friend in okay. online co-op and face your childhood fears together. Cool. Welcome to the Necropolis. Here for this walkthrough, we have our two characters, Lo with the Raven Mask and the Blue Cape, and alone with the green jumpsuit and the red pigtails. Each character is equipped with their own iconic item. Alone has a range it's that will have a variety of usages, like for example, activating mechanisms. Which is a little bit brighter. Lo's iconic item is a bow. It can be used to solve puzzles and make new paths when the road seems blocked. 
To survive in this dangerous world, teamwork could be when essential, and Joe one. and Alone will have to work together to no, keep moving forward. I don't think that's how physics works, whatever. During the game, our two friends will find new items to help them progress. Necropolis is a peculiar place. Raised from the desert sands and powered by gusting winds, it has been described as a city of eternal energy and certain death. It is a weird place that used to be inhabited by the dwellers. As you can see, the ancient metropolis is now more of a ghost town. And it is unclear what happened to its inhabitants. a baby, one of a new residents of Little Nana Street. She might have something to do with what happened to Necropolis and the people that used to live here. It seems that crows are not the only living inhabitants left. And to defend themselves against this threat, Lo and Elon had to work together and find new uses for the items. Good. Well, night has fallen on Necropolis. It's the first time ever that we share this part of the game. But you got like a home base or something? As you can see, the mood in the real city has changed quite a bit. one of the toys. We should probably avoid a gaze and play hide and seek behind the blocks. This takes a while, huh? Slow this slow paced gameplay. It should be safe here. That's Damn, it that for now. Thank you thin. all for watching this gameplay walkthrough. We can't wait to show you more about the game. That was hardly any gameplay. Gameplay walkthrough, but they didn't you know There wasn't much there, alright? It wasn't much there. Little Nightmare 3 will be available in 2025 on Xbox Series, Xbox One, and Windows PC. Wish this the game now to make sure you don't miss any news. Well, that was a spooky new look at Little Nightmares 3, which is coming to Xbox in 2025. So now it's time to go to the vault with Skyline Valley out now and the Milepost Zero update launching very soon. Our next guest has plenty to chat about. Here to give us more on the latest from Fallout 76, please welcome Milepost Zero creative director, John Rush. John, awesome. thank you so much for joining me. How are you today? Oh, great. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. Heck yeah. Let's talk some Fallout, shall we? Let's do it. So first up, a huge part of the Fallout franchise and also Bethesda as a whole is community involvement and the impact that they actually have on yourselves, if that's fair to say. Can you tell me a little bit more about what that impacts your development timeline from the community involvement? Sure, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I've said it I've said it before, Bethesda Game Studios has the best community in gaming. Uh, they're so great at giving 
giving feedback, saying what's not working, saying what they'd like to see. Mm. So the team always makes sure to stay on, on top of all that feedback, whether it's on Reddit or Discord or, or whatnot. And what we do is we kind of boil it down to large strokes, bigger trends, right? And how what features can we make to satisfy these things that players want mm. and how do they fit across across a timeline while satisfying our builders and our adventurers alike. Nice. I mean, you mentioned Reddit just there, and I'm really curious how you actually use those sites or maybe other corners of the internet mm. to actually take the feedback from the community and then put that in the game. What does that look like for you and the team? Well, I'd like to outline some sort of really cryptic process, but it's really <laughs> just me on my phone going down the post <laughs> and remembering, oh yeah, somebody said that. But you know, it, it's more than just reading the feedback. It's also being able to look at that feedback through the lens of a player. Mm. So we all play the game on the team. Uh, I, speaking for myself, have multiple high-level characters I've gone through the game with to try different things. Uh, multiple new, new characters fresh out of the vault to try different <laughs> things. So looking at that feedback that we get from players through the lens of players ourselves mm. and kind of trusting ourselves to make those the right choices for the game. Nice. Showing off with quite a few high-level characters there. I see you. Um, we were and by the way, I on. made those myself. I well wasn't giving them. Thank you. No, that's very good. <laughs> we were chatting before about one of your latest characters, your ventures. Care to tell us or share with the viewers about the captain? Oh, yes. <laughs> the, latest, the latest character uh, sometimes shows up on the socials and that's Captain Nuke McLeod. Nice. And Captain Nuke McLeod lives up to his name and loves to drop nukes. So <laughs> we get the community together and they follow me around while I drop nukes and we just have a lot of fun. I'll stay out of the way of those servers. That's right. <laughs> Avoid the nukes. Yep. What is um, the reaction from the community that you see when you do take those um, comments, that feedback, and actually put it in the game? What's it like seeing the reaction to those from the community? I think it's great. It's, it's the type of feedback that we kind of get over time, right? Mm. Because it's not so much taking a specific thing like I want a neon green wig or something like that. It's, it's looking at, hey, I'm looking for more things to do at the end of the game. I want more challenging experiences. So uh, as those features kind of come out further down the road, we see uh, that positivity from players mm -hmm. uh, reflected back at us through, through comments and feedback. That's really cool. I mean, yeah, I love some um, character creator options as well. So maybe a neon green wig would be great, but that can wait as well. We've got plenty to do in Skyline Valley at the moment as well. And with that came the first new map expansion for the base game. Can you tell me what that means to you and the team and to the game itself about having that map expansion? And they still, they still make so things for this game? It as a map mutation. Nice. Kind of keeping it within the, yeah. the vein of Fallout. <laughs> but what I've come to learn over the years is that uh, you know, players really love to play on the Appalachia map. Mm -hmm. Appalachia in our game is really kind of the main character. We were introduced to Appalachia when the first game first came out, and it's really changed since then, and all the, all the, all the updates that we've had. Mm -hmm. So knowing the players really like to stay in Appalachia and experience that, we wanted to give them opportunities to continue telling their own stories. So uh, using Skyline Valley as a reference, they have more places to build, more places to adventure, uh, and also using Skyline Valley for a way to further the story of Appalachia itself, telling our own stories for the players to experience. Mm. Uh, so the idea for Skyline Valley came from Vault 63. It was really mysterious what was going on there. So we were thinking, what should this new region look like? DLC. What's about Vault 63? And that's dark and mysterious. So let's make this region dark and mysterious. Uh, and so that's kind of where the... Yeah. The, uh, the the tone of the new space came from and yeah. the thought behind it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's the mission, the pre-update mission that you do, and you go to that massive big manor house and like literally just looks like hellfire everywhere around, and it is very much dark and mysterious, but also very fun to explore. What other things in Skyline Valley, what other game features were added with this new update, the latest one? Uh, game features added with Skyline, well, there's a new horrible creature walking around called the thrasher which is just awful yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this big this big turkey abomination which is a lot of fun to see uh, we've also got a new boss in there that's triggered by nukes the the trifecta terror the the, the trio uh storm goliaths which are really fun to fight and they play off one another 
uh, which is kind of a new mechanic. You kill one, the other two get stronger. You kill one of them, and the last one gets really strong. So mm. that's fun. Cool. Yeah, that is cool fun. Bump. And also terrifying. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> and then also with Vault 63, we've got a whole bunch of ghouls in there too, which is uh, uh, fun. And speaking of ghouls, it would be fair to chat about the Fallout TV show and my favorite character, Walton Goggins, mm. aka The Ghoul. So how are you enjoying the TV show, firstly? Have you enjoyed it? Which viewing? I've watched the series <laughs> about four times. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Damn. Great. Awesome. You can recite it already, probably, yes. dreaming about it. <laughs> what I love most about the show is through the visuals, through the story, through the characters, mm. how true to Fallout it was for people that maybe weren't familiar with Fallout yeah. before, or maybe had played other Fallouts in the past. That's crazy. Watching the show, experiencing that story, and make a good game. More. Where can they get it? Come to Fallout 76. Come to Fallout. 4, make a good TV show. Uh, so it's been great based seeing exactly that influx on of players game. coming in, having fresh new Fallout it turns experiences. Out to be good. Yeah, that's such a good point. Weird. You're so right. I think I, I was a massive Fallout fan before the TV show, but again, just watching that and immediately yeah. feeling that, that, that same feeling that I had crazy. playing Fallout 4 when that first launch. I mean, I used to fall asleep this is really sad but i used to fall asleep listen to diamond city radio <laughs> at night time but yeah the tv show just encapsulates everything you're so right and with that success how has that like been reflected in fallout 76 as well we've seen some um maybe some new jumpsuits added vault suits and um, what other parts has influenced the game Sure. So with the show, uh, we made very uh, specific offerings that had specific ties to the show, like Lucy's backpack or the, the, the cowboy duster, uh, which players really love. And they're, yeah. they're very Fallout, thematic to Fallout. So it was great to add those. Um, I would say, you know, from the, the reception the show has gotten, it's really sort of emboldened us to continue taking the game in the direction we have been. It's sort of fortified uh, in our brains the decisions that we've been making uh, that are, you know, very, very true to Fallout, mm. and uh, it's really got us pumped for what's coming up down the road. Heck yeah. Can you tell me your favorite character? From the show? Yeah. It's got to be Thaddeus. How? Why aren't I dead? <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> so funny. Thaddeus is great. Thaddeus right. is good. I like all the characters, but Thaddeus, of course, Thaddeus yeah. had me laughing, yeah. <laughs> Stunning. Now, um, we've mentioned a wee bit about Skyline Valley, but obviously we have Milepost Zero coming up very soon. What can players look forward to in this new update coming? Milepost Zero is a really exciting update. Of course, we've got the caravans that we've been talking about that I was watching players play just back there, which was a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, caravans is awesome. We've also got a new uh, legendary look crafting system, which gives players a lot all. more agency into, into making but specific gear they want for their builds, gives them a bit more control. Um, and we've got Best Builds, which is uh, a great step forward for our builders and being able to connect them so they can share their builds in game much easier and uh, show appreciation to one another. If you run across a best build camp that you like, you give it a thumbs up and that in oh. upvoted camps with most thumbs up get featured on multiple servers across Appalachia. That's so cool. it's really cool. Okay. That sounds sick. I'll definitely be challenging myself. I love games like Fallout and then also in Elder Scrolls Online and then I love building in The Sims as well. So yeah, definitely I'll be building and uh, maybe taking some inspo from the rest of the community as well. That sounds awesome. Cool. I can't wait for that. Now, um, you mentioned as well, you've seen some of the fans playing it here on the booth at Gamescom and then also in the public test server just now. Um, how have you found the reaction? Are people happy with it? Are you excited? Have you been taking notes as well? Uh, it's great. You know, I think awesome. overall they're really excited. Uh, yeah. Again, it goes back to giving our players the tools and the agency to make their own stories in the game. So what better stories are you going to come up with than running the perilous route of Skyline Drive while being assaulted by giant thrasher turkeys and raiders, you know, doing caravans with your friends. It's just super cool. Yeah. There's so uh, many new adventures to look forward to. That's so sick. Mm -hmm. Now, can't wait for Milepost Zero, but John, is there anything else that you want to share with me today, maybe? Maybe there is. You know, we've talked about Milepost Zero quite a bit. Yep. Milepost Zero is awesome. We know What's next? that's coming out pretty soon. The next one. September 3rd. Uh, we've got Ghouls coming out uh, early 3rd. next year. What's in between? We've got an exciting update go. coming out uh, this December. This December, players exciting. get to experience the Gleaming Depths. Heck All yeah. eight Raids, of them. The Gleaming Depths. This is a, an in-game experience for our most hardcore adventurers. 
full of nasty only bosses two of them. that are tough to take down. Only two hardcore players that are playing this game. It's great. And once players get to the end of it, if they live to tell the tale, they get a chance at getting four star legendary weapons, power armor, and gear. Wow. Sick. I love that exclusive. Let's go. Gleaming Depths. I cannot wait to try that out. I'll have a lot of grinding to Crazy. do, but yeah, maybe the captain can come in and help me out level my character up. Love that so much. John, I've got one more question mm -hmm. that I'd love to know the answer for. Would you rather eat a fried rad roach or some glowing fungus stew? So I'm not going to get into specifics, but I kind of already have a preference from past experience. I've have had glowing you gotta pick the roach. roach before. I was at the That's show right. premiere. It was yeah, absolutely just gotta... fantastic. There I would never turn down the opportunity <laughs> to have that again. Yep. So. Glowing Rad Rose. Glowing Rad Rose. Exactly. There we go. We heard it's it here. John, choice. thank you so much for chatting with me and thank you for joining us. Now, fans obviously won't have to wait long at all for the next Fallout 76 update. Milepost Zero launches September 3rd. Check out Xbox Game Pass to play Fallout 76 as well as a metric ton of other titles right now. Remember, with Xbox Game Pass, you can get new games on day one like Call of Duty Black Ops 6 on October 20. 5th, play some of the biggest games of the year and unlock partner benefits from our pals at Riot Games yep. and EA Play. And if you're not already a Game Pass member, what are you doing? Join now and get your first month of PC Game Pass for one dollar right. or one euro. This offer won't last long, so that's now. One euro. So coming up, we have the team from Towerborn stopping by to walk us through their latest gameplay demo. But first, it's the latest from Planet Coaster 2. Planet Coaster 2. Pre-alpha. Is that the only footage? Where's the Okay. I was j it just ends there, like, wow, okay. There we go. Where's the gameplay, though? Okay, it's just in the engine. Hi, I'm Rich Newman. Well, it's got to be gameplay. It's coming out this year. I hope you enjoyed the trailer for Planet Coaster 2. I'm here to show you a bit more about the game. So let's dive in. <laughs> Planet Coaster oh, is a go. creative okay. management simulation game where players yep. can build their dream coaster park, manage that park, and then share coaster their creations park. with others. And in park. Planet Coaster 2, we have new water park features. We have deeper creativity, new management tools, and the possibility of building a park with a friend, one player at a time, by sharing okay. a save. To celebrate our new water park features and new creative tools, we're going to be adding a new flume to this pool area of our park for our guests to enjoy. We're going to be doing that by going down to our flume section, and we're going to be adding a brand new flume. We have a, a number of different flumes or Four slides that you'll be able to build in the game. One of, of which will be Four. our body flume, which is what we're going to place in our pool area. Four of them. Before we build the flume itself, we're going to need to build a flume platform for our guests to okay. uh, enter the flume from. So we're going to build our platform, and then we have a number of different start pieces that we'll, uh, our guests will use to enter the flume. We have our kind of open, standard open flume piece, as well as uh, different special types of pieces. We have a flume vertical start piece for our guests to enjoy, which is a trapdoor piece where our guests will get in and then uh, the trapdoor will open up and they will drop through into the flume. You won't die. As we're building our flumes, one. we can see that our test dummy is coming as well. It will follow the flume pieces as we're adding them. 
and then give us the excitement, fear and nausea rating of our flume and then give us feedback on whether this is going to be an enjoyable experience for our guests. That doesn't look very fun. And for this flume, we have a number of different uh, flume pieces. We have open pieces and we have enclosed pieces. So we're going to uh, add an, an enclosed piece to this flume. We also have different types of pieces, uh, one of which is our transparent piece. So we're going to add a transparent piece to our flume so we can see our guests as they come down these flumes for them to enjoy. We also have a number of end pieces that you can put on your flume, including runout lanes. But for the end of this body flume, I think we'll be adding uh, one of our plug hole pieces, which is one of our special end pieces. <laughs> so we're going to place that down. And now Go that's on. in place, we're going to edit the way that our uh, flume looks so we can Go to our customization tab and change the different color that options. Looks like on our a flumes. Drop. flumes in real life have a very striking stripey pattern, and what we can do here is adjust the colors of each one of those um, yeah. segments okay. on our flume. So we can change our flume uh, special pieces and start pieces to be uh, a nice green for our guests to enjoy. We can change the color of our second segment of our flume to be a complementary green. We can change this purple area to be uh, yellow. And then finally change the last segment of this flume to be um, a nice black as well. At the moment, our flume does look good, but I think we can make it even uh, better and more attractive for our guests by adding scenery to the platform around it. How do they get so up to it, though? a few uh, rubber rings to really make it thematic to the, the experience that our guests will be having as they, as they enjoy this flume. Yeah. Now that's in place, we need to add an entrance to our flume for our guests yep. to get onto the platform. So we're going to add our flume stair piece okay. so that our guests can get up onto the platform and enjoy the flume. Is that what a wrong? Okay. Already better than Halo Infinite Forge systems. Okay, you have to block the entrance completely. Yeah, I like that. And there we go. Our flume is finished and looking good and ready for our guests to enjoy. Flumes are one of the many amazing new attractions that you can build in Planet Coaster 2 that allow you to make a park that is truly unique and yours. If you like this video, Planet Coaster 2 is now available for wishlisting. Thank you for joining me. Goodbye. Nice. Not bad. Hello. I'm Mike Laidlaw, Chief Creative Officer at Yellow Brick Games. What's this? And welcome to the world of Eternal Strands. This is a new fantasy action adventure game where the world around you is your weapon. In Eternal Strands, you will <laughs> on your journey as a young, oh, magic wielding me. weaver named Brit. She seeks to unravel the secrets of the Enclave, a once thriving center of magic now left in ruins. At your base camp, you'll forge bonds with members of your weaver band, who will support you in your expeditions with their various skills. You've worked hard for this, and I have faith in you. Select your next quest, and customize your gear before venturing out through the Loom Gate, on your way to discover the fate of these shattered lands. Okay. In the Enclave, you can climb and interact with nearly everything you see. The mantle, the magical cloak on your back, grants you control over frost, flame, and kinetic magic. Combine these elements in creative ways to manipulate the environment to your advantage and defeat your foes. Uh -huh. But the Enclave's foes mix of like all Zelda, sizes. some other games. Behold, an arc. This colossal 25 meter construct wields immense power. Oh damn! Got him. Your Crushed. Rather than risking your loot, return to base camp. Damn, you can just A limp away like passed. that. Reforge your gear with your hard-earned resources to even the odds against the mighty epics. That don't it don't look like you're strong enough to beat that thing. But, uh, freely between maps, 
Extreme weather alters the battlefield in this true physics playground. Harvesting That's cool. from these formidable adversaries allows you to weave new abilities into your mantle. With new powers at your command, and the world is your weapon, you hold the key to uncovering okay. the mysteries of the Enclave. Take up the mantle in eternal strands. No, oh, that, that looks good. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try this. Coming early next year? Alright. Oh, Xbox only in... I don't know if we drive that. Move your train. Kind of like an upgraded version of what's it called the raft game that's definitely that's definitely what this is Yeah, that looks good. Oh, Game Pass next year. Okay, nice. Oh, it says Xbox, so I don't think they mean PC as well. Unfortunately. You just got a deep dive into the gameplay of Eternal Strands and Look Avoid Train, which is coming to Game Pass that was not a deep next year. Dive. So that was, get ready. That was first, like five minutes. It seems minutes. like only yesterday we were here at Gamescom enjoying the first Towerborn demo. Now, a year later, the game is nearly ready for prime time. Joining me now with more is Stoic CEO and President Trisha Scoffer, Game Director Daniel McLaren, and Co-Founder and Chief Creative Officer Arnie Jorgensen. So, how is everything going at Gamescom, Trisha? Uh, oh it's boy. fantastic. We're so excited to be back. The crowd has been exceptional, as always. <laughs> and the booth's been full, and players are just enjoying themselves. Uh, a lot of excitement, a lot of smiles on their faces, and we're just happy to always have the, the game in the, the hands of the players. Yeah, it's been amazing at Gamescom yep. this year. So many people, but it's also been a huge week for you guys indeed tell me a bit more about it absolutely on tuesday Our we announced morning. that we will be on uh, early access on steam on september 10th yeah and we're coming to uh game preview on xbox and windows pc in 2025 so really not that far away as well 19 days and i'm also so excited because we've got a demo we're gonna be playing, days. but mclaren can for those that haven't seen towerborn yet can you give us the elevator pitch why is this game going to be so much fun to play yeah so it's the quintessential side-scrolling brawler yeah. which you see okay. generally in like a smaller single-player shorter experience game we've decided why not make this a bigger game why not put in sweet loot drops why not let your friends play together collect cool stuff and kill yep. bigger enemies and then brag about it so that's basically what we built it's it's what we all love to do as well yeah. and I, like it's one of the reasons i'm so excited they were inspired by like castle so wars i got to play it here last shit. year and this honestly i am love these type of games like world of warcraft <laughs> i brought up on but going into towerborn i'm a little bit competitive and we've also got three different characters on the screen so i think yeah. arnie if you kind of talk us through what each of us can do yeah. the different abilities oh they're gonna got. play sure so everyone just kind of mess around on this first screen before we get too deep but we're going to be uh, going to uh, okay. early access with four different classes here we see the shadow striker she's got uh, dual uh, dual daggers and she can move about the screen really quickly and do uh, do high damage then we also have the sentinel with the sword and shield he yep. can block and he can also parry they so should stop moving the right time, they should, raise your they shield, should bang, chill out they become dizzy They're, uh... Uh, and then we got the pyro class here with the war club big slow heavy damager that can okay. fight through damage uh, so that's the three that we've got right here. We're not showing off cool. the rock breakers, which... Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, <laughs> that's I, I, not... Bro, these old people dead. are that's tweaking the on the controllers. With the giant clubs. I know, the thing. They're like, really spazzing out. The I'm just like, that's right, the calm down. Striker. I'm sorry. No, no, I, I, I'm actually quite excited because I have seen Trisha use the, the fists before. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And I was like, 
she was doing a lot of damage yeah. so i was like I, that's what i'm playing as so i've also got a is it an ombre above me <laughs> is it an umbra huh? yeah, you got got a little an umbra. and so how, how does that work so the umbra is part of your loadout uh oh. the, the, we're going to be launching with about nine different umbra and then adding them as we go through early access but all the different umbra give you different abilities some could do damage some could do healing uh so we're, we see three different umbra here today and we'll see what they do well, I'm quite excited. And how, how, how do I trigger it? Is that with my right trigger? Yes. That's, that's with your okay. right trigger. Now, if, if you press your right bumper, that's when you're going to do this massive uh, damage punch. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. So I don't want to use that. So that's the little thing on the bottom of the screen, isn't it? When you can kind of see the, the bar. So the okay. orange bar, if you look at your HUD up there, the orange bar orange? That fills up. That will be your right bumper button. That's the special ability. Okay. The three little pips down at the bottom, when those turn blue, if you hold your left trigger and hit your light attack or your heavy attack, it will do this? one of two special abilities and consume one of those pips. Okay, nice. All right, should we, should we go forward to our, like, yeah. our first fight? Right, I'm kind of just... Good luck, man. Right, I'm going in first. It's not, on, it's not because I'm trying to do the most damage, I promise. There's a lot of different things to remember for each class, but for now, just have fun playing. Uh, you'll learn oh, the class nice. over over the hours of play uh, playtime. And there's like combos, isn't there, that you can do? So you kind of want to set it up to do oh, the most. Yes. And That's right. A little bar on the bottom. How, good. That, how do I get that to charge faster? Just by hitting things or by by completing combos. By completing combos, it's going to fill up much faster. And that's your uh, your weapon meter. How do I um, know my combos? Is it just like mixing up like fast and heavy attacks or yeah it's a combination of using your light and your heavy uh, it's a four button combo system so any combination oh, okay. of those four buttons will do different things oh, so and if you cool. hold down x you can launch enemies into the air get up there and do some aerials Ooh, nice coming in and stealing my kill Benny. i appreciate I, that I, I would never do i, I i'm person. not a kill thief oh i am oh, just I getting that, involved sir. i am i am i'm happy to oh that oh that was help I, that I, out I, I'm not sure uh, that the people are. watching here know that there's a, a friendly rivalry going on right here. We're actually, <laughs> but you see those donuts too, don't you? Done in this, so we can see if Benny can beat uh, Trisha and McLaren. Don't know what you're on about. <laughs> Please. But we're going to find out, aren't we? Oh, no, I've just missed. I've just wasted my combo. Uh, <laughs> it's a no-lose, McLaren. If you win, you basically be a professional yeah. gamer. Pretty much. <laughs> no, no, no. That's no. the goal here. No, this game looks really fun. Too far ahead, right? This is... This is I definitely want to play this. Now, oh. I've got my own enemy. <laughs> it's been my dream to beat a professional gamer. So. Hey, can you not do, steal my damage, please? Like, no, my damage. Absolutely. Oh, you just stopped him getting up. Yes, sir. If you hit him early enough, you can uh, you can whack him pretty quickly. It's like whack him all. <laughs> How you doing okay. over there, Benny? I'm. I, th I think I'm doing good. I. I, <laughs> I think. I've done a lot of damage. I'm hitting my combos. Oh no, I've just missed, I, I keep camp. wasting my, okay. um... Okay, no, 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 no. How you doing? No, I feel like I'm falling behind. Man, Trisha's got the best weapon with that spin <laughs> to win. Ah, that's normally my weapon. Tr Trisha's actually playing Claren's weapon. That's I know, right. it's so irritating. But Benny is playing Trisha's. Trisha's that's really true. good with the, with the rock breaker. Maybe you haven't seen my stats on all the weapons yet, but I, I played them all. Don't you worry. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a couple more people over here. I'm determined. Uh, too okay, wait, 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 wait. So right now, I'm actually quite low on health. I've taken a lot more damage. Well, that's this okay. This has taken none. I've got you. I've got you here. If you come up a bit, there's a healing shrine. <laughs> oh, yes. And yes, that'll yes. just get everybody refreshed because you get ready. So hold on one right, second. Hold on, hold on. Let's wait oh, a second. Oh, 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 oh. Right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so, so the way the death works in this game, when, when you die, your umbra is going to come over and it's going to res you. But if you run out of lives, then it takes your teammates to res you, and it's oftentimes hard. If they take damage while doing it, then you're dead. But I want to talk really quickly. We've come into this mission for a reason. We're, we're, we're in this mission Trisha. because we <laughs> have <laughs> Trisha. <laughs> we, heard that there was a, we heard that there was a boss in the area. So I think we're on we're on its trail, and we'll see what happens here as we as we enter the next cave. Yeah. Okay, okay, all right, here we go. Are you ready? Are you, are you, are you sure you're ready? There we oh, go. Let's go. Are you sure? All right. Let's go. All right, wait, wait, wait. No, I've got, I, you know where I'm going. Oh, here we are. Pengo oh, no. Jira. Oh, there we go. No, there we go. go. Okay. Get it. Beat its ass. Now, if you notice, there's a break bar at the bottom of the screen right under the uh, yep, stagger. Uh, McLaren, tell us a little bit about that. So, it's a quick essential break bar. The minute you break, break it, bar. it will stun the boss and allow just you to call go it a stagger bar. And so, oh, geez, just call man, it it's always is. those rocks, always in the face. You gotta, you gotta, I know. 
So now he's Get in broke it. broken Hit phase. It. So now you can just do Use all your, your specials. combos, do all of your damage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is where you really get. Benny, this is where you get your damage. Yeah, this yeah, is no, where no, you get the numbers I'm up. Going, I'm going. That's what I'm going. Get your numbers right, up. There we go. Oh. Keep in there. Oh no. Okay. I need to use my ombre. Your ombre. I love it. That, I don't I know why I'm calling it. Officially change it to ombre. I don't know why I'm calling it ombre. I think I'm officially changing it to ombre. We're literally doing about. We, we just turn this game into the smaller ones. ones somehow. <laughs> oh, I do something. Thought just walking oh, back and forth. Wait, are you dead? No, not no. even oh, close. It's a damage. Ah. Uh, now I do have to say, this boss has been wrecking people on the show floor. Yeah, it's been pretty great. But uh, but we've got some uh, some people here that have played this game before. Yeah. That might be making it yeah, easy. Oh my god, there's so many rocks yeah, getting thrown in my head. Right. Oh, here we go. I messed time that as up. Well. Boink. Uh, this oh, is no, I've just wasted. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is the type of fight, as you would expect in any Stun game it. like this, that if you beat a boss, you're gonna get wicked good gear, you're gonna get uh, great weapon drops, aspect. You didn't drops, get stunned? What happened there? What was that? Mods that you can slot into your equipment. But this is the type of fight that you want to go into and get because, or beat, because this is where you get the good stuff. Yep. Oh, I've just Shoot. done. By the way, no. I've just done so much for us there. Did you I've really? just, I've just taken out like ten ads. Well, we're gonna carry the team. Team. He's carrying the team. Yeah, he really is. Appreciate that. I've, yeah. I've taken the boss See? down to I, quarter life. What I found though is I apparently only get one damage for every single one of these kills. So That's I've, true. I've just put it out there that I'm just doing. I'm being a I team see, player. I see. I see. Yeah. And, it, and okay. it's not because I think oh, I'm no, behind no, no, on the no, damage curve. No. Oh, gee, <laughs> I rolled right into it too. Okay, so you can dash through that too. First death. Who does that belong to? I know how to play this game. I promise, folks. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Okay, come on. Right, we go, we go. Come on. There it is. Unload. Damage, damage. There we go. We got him. We got him. He's going to get back up. Go, 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 go. On this phase. That's it. Oh, oh yeah. Jump. Let's go. Nice. Uh, all right. Now uh, the moment of uh, truth. I don't think we need to take a look all at the game. Right. We do. I, I don't think we, you know what we, we're basing this off? <laughs> eliminations. Let there me know like, in the chat if we should base it on Mission review. Yeah. Nice. Or not. Okay. F F in chat for Benny. I don't want to look at my stats. Here we go. Here we go. I don't want to look. Mission stats. Oh, okay. Enemies defeated 6 9 17. That's okay, Benny. Damage down. Okay. Can we like. Oh, come on. I just. I know this. There's something wrong. I, I defeated nice. way more than 9 enemies. Did you, though? I swear I did. Did you, though? Well, that's that. Sure. They've played the game once or twice. <laughs> but you know, hold on a second. So, so this right here is the combat that we're that we're showing here on the show floor, and we're really we're, we're just pushing right. That's now how you know who to kick of, at the end of it. And I think is, is is really something special. But the whole game is. We got half RPG. my damage. There's a huge map that you move out onto, and you explore tile by tile, just like this, and you uncover through the fog of war different areas of bosses, uh, loot chests, uh, ventures, which are our version of dungeons. There's a ton to explore in this game. It didn't RPG. show the loot. And then you go back to the tower and you get your missions you go to the forge uh what is, what is this saying for towerborn I oh want yes that's right <laughs> yeah, i totally blanked tower was a sign. hold on a Death? Was hello the the one that told me. Yep. i was basking in my success and i just wasn't listening to yeah. anything except that i beat benny a pro gamer the saying of towerborn is, is by the way i want to explore no, no, the world next and i want time. to be strong enough to do it <laughs> next right. time i'm gonna get some practice in and i i, I will beat you it's right there i'm on the floor <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna be, i'll be there a week i'm just gonna that's not gonna be we'll do it you guys join in zoom play a game that's we'll, right. we'll show it on the yeah, side yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll we'll do it um <laughs> but one thing I have to say is we see more games go into early access. Why was it so important and specifically to go into Steam for you, Trisha? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you getting have the, to put it on Steam. Game into players' hands is Come super on. important to us. We want to have that uh, the discussion with the community, have them be a part of the game building. It's it's what Stoic has always done yeah. from our very first game. And so getting there, being able to have that and have the have the input and take it in. Um, Steam just happens to uh, do that well for us, and we want to make sure we're fully prepared yep. for when we came, come to Game Preview next year and have yep. an expansive, expansive uh, players. Uh, it's going to be a while for this, in until this yeah. game comes out. We're truly ready for them. We, we don't want to disappoint. Honestly, it's been some of the most fun I've had. <laughs> I've, really, I've, I've really, really enjoyed playing it, and I, I can't wait to go and sit there Early and then, and then it, will, it will happen. I'm excited for next time. I don't Anytime, any place. <laughs> I don't no. 
but thanks so much for stopping by but remember i want to play it right now at powerborn.com if you want to go and have a go yourself now if that chat has you hyped for Towerborn, Towerborn. then you will love what the team has in store check out a taste of a new dev diary coming soon Towerborn is an action okay. RPG online multiplayer game. We're going to support for many years. It's a living world. Steam Early Access is a great vehicle for us to get started. My greatest joy in this is going to be sitting here a year from now. Going, I had no idea that this would go in this direction. I mean, this game looks really good. This looks like it'll be... A lot of fun. And now it's People time to say play. goodbye, but only until tomorrow. And what a day tomorrow will bring. So you got to make sure you join us when we kick off our final day of coverage with one of the most anticipated titles of the year. It's Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. We'll they also jump anything. into the world of Metaphor Refantasio, a fancy RPG from the minds behind All right, Persona though. 3, Persona 4, Pretty and good. Persona 5. Plus Not the team bad. from Thunder Lotus will stop by to help us all survive... A lot of decent games. I think I think this was the best looking one. This last one here, Towerborn. This one looked really good. Um, they had that Berserker game, kind of Elden Ring, e esque e remake type of thing. Looked pretty good. Um, the Maca Break game, the Mac game looks really good. Wherever that is, there it is. This game looked really good. First Descendant uh, episode one season one whatever they call it looks pretty good uh elder scrolls gold road looks super good uh i wasn't aware that people still play it but it yeah it looks it looks really good um oh this roguelike uh was it redacted this game looks really good too like hopefully this is co-op that'd be really cool like, I guess, oh, or versus co-op type of thing. Um, Play simulator, cool. Big update. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it for the day. Pretty good. Not bad. Oh, and then the Star Wars game at the beginning. Pretty much looked kind of mid. Not a lot of options. Pretty slow. Slow-paced combat game. We'll see. We shall see. Overall, really good though. Really good day.